Good evening. Um, today is Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. Um, we are going to be doing things a little bit differently. We are going to have today both a special session, which we'll, we will start with, followed by a, uh, our normal legislative session. And the agendas have all been posted um, on our website. And for the trustees, is everybody here? I don't see Omar, actually. Hello, Manny. Anyway, uh, we will, I'm sorry. I normally wouldn't have started until everyone was present. Sorry about that. Um, we will probably be doing trustee um, announcements actually in the legislative session. Um, and I'm certain no one wants to hear us say it twice, both at the special and legislative. Um, as exciting as our announcements are, um, so let us start, I think, um, with the call to order. And hey, can I just make one correction? It's a work session after the special session. Oh, it's a work. A I'm sorry. Sorry, that's why we're having a special session. This is a session because we're going to work session. Thanks. I appreciate that. So um, let's start with the pledge and then we'll move on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, Trustee Fritchie? Present. Trustee White? Present. Trustee Lopez? Present. Trustee Quesada? Present. Mayor Levin? Present. Okay, uh, we're going to the public hearing in the matter of local law number three of 2021, a local law amending chapter 216 sidewalk cafes of the village of Austin and Coke. I'm looking. Did we start too early and people just aren't used to it? Maddie, anybody? I'm not seeing anyone. Any no, no hands. All right. No, and okay. I do, you, and I'm not seeing anything in the, the Q&A box either. Okay, well, maybe we're good. Sorry, Trusty Lopez. I was just saying that I normally don't start till everybody's here, but I somehow thought maybe you were here in spirit. And so uh, we're gonna do the announcements um, at the next session. For now, we're just gonna go through this. Okay, so I guess, Martha? Are we adjourning the public hearing or are we closing the public hearing? We, I think that we have to just decide, but it seemed to me that the discussion we had last week is that we wanna bring this and we should be closing the public hearing at this I point, I unless- believe, I believe we should be closing it. Right. Because of the timeline. That was the whole point of doing yeah, this Is that correct, Stuart? Thing. Yep. That is correct, Trustee Fritchie. Okay, so then can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Any comments from the board? Martha? Okay. Uh, moving on to public comment on agenda items. No, 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 no. You need to do the vote. Oh, sorry. My apologies. All those okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now I'm going on to public comments onto the agenda items. Is there anybody here who would like to make an who would like to address the board on any of the resolutions on the agenda tonight? Okay. There's uh, something in the there is something in the Q and A box. Okay. It says, is this for, and it came in at 7.33, which was a minute ago. Uh, is this for L3, LL3 or LL4? Uh, we just did Local Law 3. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what was just discussed or voted on. That's okay. Is the Q&A wants to speak about LL3? Is that what just happened? No, they just had a specific question over which one they were discussing. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, which you were discussing, not that. Okay. So we just discussed past tense, LL3, you are now moving on to public comments on agenda items, which is where we're at right now. 
Okay, uh, seeing no one. Um, village board resolutions authorizing the village manager to sign an agreement with Firematic Supply Co um, Company uh, Co. Incorporated resolved that upon review with the Corporation Council, the village manager is authorized to sign the agreement contract and other associated documents with Firematic Supply Co. Incorporated East Yampak, New York, the purchase of one new Pierce Enforcer pumper in accord with specifications at an agreed upon cost of $738,028.50. Do I have a motion? I'm sorry, I, what, I'm looking at just the resolution. Am I missing something in here? Because the resolution is just for the public hearing for local law three. You got to scroll down. I don't see anything else to that. It's on the agenda. It's it's on the Okay, public sorry, agenda. sorry. Yes, correct. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll just accept it. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I have a motion in a second? So move. Second. Any comments on the board? Any questions about this one? Okay. I see none. Martha? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Then can I have a motion and a second to adjourn into work session? So moved. Second. Any comments? I don't think we need any, Martha. Okay. okay. So moved. So we are closing the special meeting. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I'm very happy to report that we will be, staff and everybody involved with Outdoor Cafes will now be able to move forward. Um, given how beautiful today is, I'm very happy that we're able to um, help everyone to um, open their restaurants, outdoor cafes as they so desire when they apply for it outdoors and looking forward to spending some time outdoor at our local restaurants. I hope everybody else does as well um, as the weather gets warmer and I think the proposals for a six month or so period of time. So exciting stuff. Um, with that, we close uh, this special uh, session. Um, might be an all time record of seven minutes for this board. So I appreciate all of that. We're moving now on to the um, work session. May I, may I ask just one question? Because sure. I'm a little confused. Uh, were we supposed to read the local law number three in regards to the sidewalk cafe? We only closed the meeting, but we did not read um, the resolution for this one. Am I missing something, Stuart? The resolution will be voted on next week, trustee. Okay, that's 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 why because the comment of the mayor is like you know, make it seem like yeah. I think that's misleading. That you're okay. you're correct. Okay. It's very misleading. I think okay. I'm so far ahead of this because yeah. I, just right. I just wanted to that. make sure. I apologize. That I, no. that I, okay, thank you. No, no, I I jumped ahead. I shouldn't have done that, but basically, um, I jumped ahead on this. The reason we have the special meeting is to get this done so that we can move forward um, to next week. Otherwise, we would only be having this conversation next week and waiting two more weeks. So that was the whole purpose of this. So thanks, Manny. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay. We're going into work session. Boom. Okay bringing it up on my screen because I have to flip from one to the other. So let me just say that I didn't want to do in the special session, but um, just to keep in line with what we normally do. Um, if we uh, might um, have the trustees, if there are any announcements, um, this would be the time. I have none. Okay, anybody? Nobody has announcements, okay. Um, boy, this we're like on a speed race here tonight. I, I, I had some announcements. I may just skip them all together. Thanks. Um, so uh, I just I did want to make one announcement. We're going to be discussing um, budgets, and in discussion of the budgets, one of the things that occurred to me is um, that I'm very interested in looking at the state budget that was passed uh, not that long ago, somewhere around uh, $212 billion were passed New York State. Um, so I wanted to just focus people's attention on it because one of the things that village staff will end up doing 
And I don't, they're like the unsung hero when it comes to budgets. People may or may not realize that some of what happens um, and what village staff works on, and I would not call it sexy work. I would not say that people are aware of it uh, for the most part. But one of the things they do is constantly look for grants, um, state level, county level, federal level, et cetera, et cetera. Mostly it's for us, it's state. A grant, some of them are pretty small, they require a lot of work, but some of them are significant. And we have done some amazing work um, over time with um, all sorts of improvements. This particular budget is really interesting because um, if you read it, uh, you will see that there's some new things on there. So because I guess of COVID, et cetera, there is um, a whole bunch of money uh, being set aside um, for school aid that in the past um, wasn't exactly what we all wanted. Now, how much of it Austin gets? That's sort of phase two. That's another discussion. I am now talking about 2022 budget that was delivered by the state. There's also compensation um, for employees and help for employees who um, didn't benefit from all the COVID-19 money that came through to businesses because some of them weren't able to prove that they work in some of these businesses. They may not be receiving W-2s, et cetera. So there is money set aside for that. There is um, aid for environmental um, causes, a very large, a significant amount of money. Um, I have a two page write up that I'm actually going to ask the village to post that came down from the state. Um, and I'm going to be listening to um, Senator Andrew Stewart-Cousins tomorrow morning is doing sort of um, a little bit of an explanation um, for nonprofits on what that might mean for them. So I'm interested in hearing it, but I'm just encouraging the public to A, really understand the budget. Those of you that own small businesses and those of you that are nonprofits, there's a lot of new line items in um, millions of dollars of grants that are out there. I say that uh, with the understanding that there are over 20 million people that live in the state of New York, half of whom are concentrated in a tiny little corner of the state of New York where we are, the bottom southernmost part, and the rest of the state takes up the rest of the geography and they too get a whole bunch of money. And universities, there's a whole bunch about SUNYs and CUNYs and what they're going to get. Um, so our staff, I am 100% sure, um, will be also looking at any opportunities that may come our way here in Austin, down to our town. Obviously, New York City will get a very large chunk of the money. Obviously, cities like Buffalo, Binghamton, whatever. But you know what? We're also going to get something out of it. And I count on this staff that's sitting here today to discuss the budget and all these people to be combing through all the opportunities and making sure that we get every penny that not only we deserve, but every penny that um, we can uh, wrangle from the state in a very positive way. I do thank um, our state representatives for fighting so hard for a budget that I think is um, historical to some extent. I'm gonna, I have a two pager on it because in order for me to understand it, I broke it down for myself. I also have gone on a bunch of websites um, to look for information, I think two pages is probably about as condensed as you're going to get. And I'll try to put that on um, the website, either in my mayor's note or whatever. And that's in line with what we're going to discuss tonight, which is the village budgets. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm super excited that the weather is getting nicer. That's on a tangent, but nevertheless, it makes me feel better. And I hope it does for everybody else. So um, since no one had announcements, we're going to get moving. Next up on the agenda looks like our village seal discussion uh, brought on by the board of trustees started last year, um, did not get um, the kind of support from the board um, that it did this year. It's a different kind of support that um, we're looking at this year. We send out a survey. Um, going, I understand, Manny, um, that you would like to discuss the survey, if I'm correct, and some of the results uh, that came through. Thank you to staff for putting it all together, getting it out there, and collecting. Am I right, Manny, that you are the uh, one that would like to yes, discuss thank, it? Thank or is it? No, that, that, I'll start okay. this and now uh, we can go from there. Uh, okay. Obviously, it's, it's a bore uh, discussion. So I, want, I definitely want to say thank you to Maddie, uh, to Maddie, to uh, Jamie. 
to everybody in the staff. Jamie did an amazing job um, putting all this stuff together in here. So pretty much, um, I don't know if it, I don't know if it, uh, Jamie, do you have this? I don't know if you want to share the screen itself or can I share the screen just for people to see the results? But pretty much what we have is we had a result of 541 um, residents or people that replied to or were part of the survey that we did. Out of the 541 uh, people that responded to the survey, uh, 338 were village residents, 130 were town uh, of Austin residents, nine were uh, village people, uh, people that worked in the village, and about 64 people that are either res former residents or stakeholders out of that. One of the things that I had asked uh, Jamie, which um, it was very helpful for me to understand is to kind of break it down, uh, to break it down in the sense of we wanted to see um, village residents only and, and what does that look like? Thank you, Jamie, uh, for sharing that over. Uh, so as you guys can see, um, people, village residents, uh, about 117 responded to keep the current village and about 221 it says that they would like to see something different, a new uh, village seal. And that's the breakdown that you guys have uh, and what, what that means. So I think at this point, uh, I'm gonna, I, I know Stuart has tried uh, to reach out the gentleman that, help was, that, that helped um, last year in regards to, the, uh, to one of the seals that we were working on. Uh, I'm gonna try to reach out again uh, this I week. There, Manny. I'm, I'm sorry? Uh, I, I, I sent him a text uh, earlier and he responded saying yeah. that it was in his spam folder and so he'll be responding via email. Okay, great, awesome. Thanks, Omar. So, um, you know, at this point is uh, up to us. Where, you know, where do we want to go? We have the results. What is that our task now? So I'm asking the rest of the board uh, to see. And, and, and is in some way, Jamie can, um, can we put these results in, in, in our Facebook, I saw, uh, not our Facebook, but on our website at some point or have them some sort of document? That, um, I don't know if it's something suitable that we would like to do, our mayor, on this or the rest of the board, we would like to put uh, paste this and put it in our website somewhere. Sure. Okay. All right. So I guess I'm going to ask the rest of the board where do we go from here? Mayor, I think um, you're muted. Are you speaking, you're muted. Oh, my, it's one of those days. Anyway, I um, think there's more to the survey. There were a handful of questions, but I think the key question is, do, do, do we keep as a village the um, current seal with the Indian head or do we um, updated to a different look and then the survey then went on to show some pictures um, really to give an idea for the artists that we bring on to look at the ideas that people like and from that create um, some re renditions for us with seal. So I think this is worthy of a discussion but to put it in context and I know that Manny presented it and I know that Manny and Dana spent a lot of time putting the uh, survey together, but really like all, really everything that we do, we work um, in unison and in order to deal with the many, many projects, which you will hear in a little while from village manager of things that we have going on um, that we'll be talking about. The most efficient way for us is once we agree on a path forward that one or two trustees take over and sort of become uh, the lead project managers, if you will, with staff so that not all five of us are jumping on top of all the projects or and then none of us are in others. So I really appreciate um, the survey being put together. Um, we, Manny had talked about village residents because, you know, who better to decide the future of the village and the people who reside in the village. That doesn't mean that we don't listen or care about opinions from um, others. Uh, for me, this is a clear show that the majority of people um, would like the village seal updated. I totally understand that there will be many people who argue about how many questions we asked, how they were asked, when they were asked. All surveys go through that. I think that um, 
we spent actually quite a bit of time on it. I'm satisfied that this covers the temperature check that that while nothing is perfect, um, it doesn't always have to be. That close enough is good enough. And I'm satisfied from my perspective and my vote that more people than not, um, and, and a, a significant majority, uh, think it's time to update it. Um, not a bad result given how many surveys we have been sending out from this village for the past two months about so many different topics. Um, and that's because we want to engage the public as much as we want, as much as we can. So it, I am a person who is very neutral on whether this should be changed or not. I see a difference between village seals and mascots. I don't like mascots. I find the whole thing of sports mascots and stuff of any kind. It's not an opinion about what they should look like, but rather that I find them to be not a useful um, portrayal of anything, whether they're animals or people, it doesn't matter. But we're not talking about a mascot. We're actually talking about a billet seal, that thing that goes on our trucks, that goes on different pieces of paper, that goes on newsletters and everything else we use. So for me, this says one, and the most important, it's time to update. Two, there were some comments about what to update and what was most like, and I don't think, Manny, that that got a lot of attention, but that it was double arch was the one that was chosen the most often, and we're going to have to decide how we feel about that as a board, because the town already uses a double arch. And if you believe that seals should make municipalities look different, choosing a seal that looks exactly like another municipality uh, may not always be um, the place to go. Lastly, that's my opinion, not, not, to, not a comment on what the board feels. Lastly, I will say, and this has been brought up in the past, um, you know, people get very attached um, to history. I'm glad people get attached to history. I happen to be a history buff. So um, I happen to think history is important. It's important because history drives the present and the future. And there is, on my part, um, no feeling that history should be eliminated. Any seal that we put together, any rendition that we approve, um, does that does not mean, from my perspective and from my vote, that we will be eliminating things that have um, the historical older seal. Many communities have changed their municipal seals and have kept um, things like plaques on park benches and all sorts of all sorts of materials have whatever seal was in place when that was done. Um, there are some flags we might have to change um, as we change things over digitally. That's probably pretty easy, but and I'm sure Dana White will speak more about this. So I do want for the people who care about. Um, how can you take away a historical significance? I actually don't think that we have to. New Rochelle did an entire logo redesign and did not eliminate their old seal from what it already stood on. They didn't go back to parks and doors and redo all the seals. First of all, it is hugely expensive. And I don't think it's the best use of tax dollars. The question for me is going forward, what will we do? So those were sort of my three uh, bullet points. Um, for where I think uh, we are with this, and who else has a comment? And Manny, you didn't make a comment about your own opinion. You simply talked about the survey. So yeah. I'm sure we'll come back yeah. to that. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And and that obviously part of you know some of, one of the questions that I didn't I didn't get to go to it because I wanted to see what the board feels. But you know, obviously there's people that bought in the different images that was part of the survey, as you mentioned. And the the biggest ones is three. Sure, um, I'm going to start from from the beginning, you guys can see that. The Hudson River had about 117 uh, positive responses. The double arches had uh, the majority of them, which is 215. And then the other one is Asinoro Plaza, which had 140. Um, so that's what the community village residents uh, felt that this should be a representation of what the new seal may look like. Um, I, 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 that topic we can obviously you know, kind of go back and, and, and think about among ourselves and what does that look like, sure, um, in, in putting all the elements together to, to represent and to pay respect to what the village of Austin is. In regards to what you said and the progression of replacing 
uh, the seal, I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, I I'm, I'm will not be in favor of replacing every single plate or every single seal that is in our village and in, in, in our municipality. I think, um, you know, with, um, with a progression of replacing as we go, for example, stationaries, as you mentioned, if we have them, you know, I want to utilize them until we don't have them anymore and replace it with whatever new will come up. Something like that, I think, um, you know, I would like to understand. I think we have something that um, uh, Karen did for us last year uh, and something like that, how much will cost. But I think a transition point, you know, when, when things will be changed, uh, I'm, I'm with you, Mayor, 100% with that. I can go. Um, thank you, um, Manny, for uh, presenting this information um, and Maddie and, and Jamie for um, supporting with the survey work. So uh, in response to some of the mayor's points, uh, starting at a very high level, should we change the village seal? Uh, one of the things that has driven us to this point is wanting to feel confident about the process of gathering information from the public and answering the question, should we change the village seal? And doing it in a way where we could get as many voices as possible, understanding that there are different perspectives on the issue and, and the fact that we respect the, the folks that uh, are uh, really connected to the current seal and those who feel that it's time for a new seal. And we put out the survey and uh, I'm confident that the survey results uh, reflect the community sentiment that uh, the majority would like to update the new seal. So that much is clear. The next question is, okay, so we're gonna update the seal. What should we update it to? You uh, read here, Manny, that the majority of the folks said the double arches. Now, I think that there is some amount of this that is um, in negotiation, uh, there's uh, the concept of anchoring, which is you say a number and then the conversation becomes about that number. Well, so similar here, the double arches were kind of anchored in a way because it was the, the, uh, the image that folks saw last year. So when given uh, a number of options, I have no idea what I, uh, another uh, image may look like. You know, I have different versions, but I have that one in my head. I know that one, so I might go with that one. It has a, the best name ID, if you will. Now, it also happens to be the one that I think is probably the best, my own personal taste, but nobody asked me what my own personal taste is, but there it is. So, okay, so what should it be? So to me, it makes sense uh, to go with uh, the double arches, but that's not what we discussed. What we discussed was once we do the survey and confirm that we do want to change to update the seal, what we should do is then choose some number of, of uh, options here, three, four, whatever it is, and have the original artist that put together uh, the, the double arch seal, Danny uh, Aviles, have him uh, put together a few more mock-ups. And then we would decide among these mock-ups, the board would decide uh, among these. We could definitely do that. My sense is at that point, it comes down to what design do you like better? A totally subjective uh, decision. And then we would go, okay, so it's Manny's artistic taste versus Omar's versus Rika's, et cetera, et cetera. So what do the people say? Well, we know that uh, by a large margin, most folks said the double arch bridge. And so we'd probably end up going in that direction anyway. I'm happy to go down the direction that we originally said of choosing three, having him design it, and then choosing among there. My sense is why not cut to the chase and go with the double arch bridge, but I'm neutral with respect to what decision we go with there. Once we decide what we want the design to be, then there's the matter of implementation. And that's one of the things that the mayor was just talking about. And I, I, village manager Karen DeTori uh, sent us an a email uh, last year, I believe it was, uh, in answering your question, uh, Deputy Mayor Casada, about what implementation would look like, how much would it cost to replace the, the easiest things, which are digital uh, in nature, what goes on the, the weekly blast, for example, versus what that, that, that huge seal that is in the courtroom, of, uh, which is tens of thousands of dollars. So there's a big range. And so we would pick somewhere in the middle of like what's reasonable. And we were having a conversation late last year about what that looked like, but it's pretty much, you know, it's common sense type of stuff. We don't want to break the bank because we don't want to change everything all at once. But over time, naturally, we don't have to change all the vehicles. But when we get a new vehicle, you put the new seal like that. 
I would be totally fine with that as well. That totally makes sense. So those are the three matters. Should we change the seal? If so, to what? And what does implementation look like? To me, I think we have a pretty good path forward, but I'm uh, interested in hearing if there is anyone that feels differently about that process. I can go. Jamie, um, there was 551 responses. How many, how far did we reach out with this? Was there, there's a number, do I remember seeing something about 7,000 was you reached? Did. Um, so I can review some of the marketing. I don't have it where I no, can I don't, share no, I just the document. Wanted, I don't need to, I just wanted you to confirm that that was the number. Uh, it, well, it, it, it went out over uh, Constant Contact where we have about 7,000 subscribers. Okay. And then it also went out on Facebook to our village page, our rec page, and our Instagram page. It was not boosted because um, Facebook said that as the post consists, uh, this is their quote, um, consists of social issues that could influence public opinion, how people vote, and may impact the outcome of an election or pending legislation. It was not. So everything you see, um, which, I can, which I did share with everyone, is organic. So our regular Facebook page, uh, where we have just over 3,000 followers, um, has hit over 4,500 uh, people. Rec page, where we have 20. 500 followers reached, um, I would say, it reached uh, slightly less than that, like 212 people. And then Instagram, it hit about 453, um, in addition to the constant contact messages. Okay, so all, um, I know I'm throwing this at you real quick. All in total, how many clicks like that we have between everything combined? Um, I can't, I can't I'd be lying if I said I could do the math in my head. So, um, constant contact, uh, for the mayor's messages where it was listed, there is about 300 click throughs to the survey. And from the web blast, uh, there were about, uh, 150 click throughs. Um, okay. engagement wise, uh, for Facebook, we had about 2,661 engagements, um, uh, with, uh, the rec, the, Village page, the rec page, 20, uh, 30 engagements, just somewhere in between the two. And Instagram, um, we've had about 50 engagements. Okay, so roughly roughly maybe 3,300 total yeah. off the top of my head. Okay. Well, but so, yeah, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, 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 about 3,300, give or take. Yes. So out of the 3,300, we had actually 550 that actually took the time to fill it out, give or take. So, um, the, I'm just looking at percentages of overalls and what, what it really reflects um, that either that many people just didn't care or, you know, the people that did care did fill out the, the survey. That being said, obviously the numbers have spoke. Uh, we have work in front of us. Uh, I do not believe we have an artist. So um, that's, that's another thing that we're a bridge we're going to have to cross and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to sit down and have some serious talks of what we really want to put on this. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. So, trusty Fritchy, I, the original artist uh, did reply uh, to my message. So um, he'll be replying to Stewart's email from October. If if he's still interested, and if we're still interested, that that he hasn't completely dropped off. Okay. Um, okay, I'll go next. Um, so this is now two surveys we've done about the village seal. And in both of them, the consensus has been to change it. Now, I see this as uh, the village of Austin is a corporation. It was uh, incorporated in 1813, the first village to, in Westchester County to incorporate which I guess made, made, is a way that you can make it easier to do business with other municipalities. So I tend to look at this as a corporate rebranding effort. I don't have the emotional attachment to the Indian head that a lot of people do. Uh, but I also know that what we're talking about is part of a very large cultural tsunami of the reconsideration of how we um, use the images of other peoples 
Um, and some might call this woke culture, but I call it just respecting people, not ourselves. And if you look at, I've looked at a lot of uh, comments that tribal associations around the country have made, and they all uh, agree that 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 they're they don't feel indigenous peoples are are should be used as symbols, icons uh, for. Um, for sports teams or butter or <laughs> whatever. Um, we're not the only local municipality dealing with this. This Croton in its police reform recommendations is recommending that one of the things it does is change its police badge to something that more people can relate to is how they put it. This is their current police badge. It's the Indian head, which bears a certain resemblance to ours, I guess. And they want to do something more like an eagle with a flag. I don't think the eagle would mind being used as a seal. And Croton is known for its eagles. Um, so I, uh, I, I like the idea of the double arch bridge, but again, I want to, you know, I am fully aware that the town also uses it. Now, this doesn't mean we could do our own version. That looks different. Um, but I don't know if, Stuart, there's any legal thing about, you know, having a seal that is the same structure as a town uses. Is there a legal issue with that? No. Okay. So, I mean, to my mind that the town probably wouldn't, you know, if, if you know, we already had the Indian head as our seal, probably when the town decided on the double arch bridge. Now, part of me is like, well, that's, our double arch bridge, which should be our seal. Um, but um, I too want to make sure we differentiate ourselves in some way. Um, I personally am, am, you know, I'm not going to say happy, but I am certainly um, as someone without the powerful emotional attachment to um, Ossining's past and its symbols and, and that, that, that I'm happy to see us moving forward with um, with a rebranding. And um, I think we can do it gradually. Uh, money is definitely a concern. I think we can do it respectfully, always respectfully. I think the historical society can play a role in this, perhaps by becoming the home to certain items that have the seal on it. Um, of course, we have to ask them, of course. So, you know, I know it's going to be a little complicated moving forward, but, um, you know, I don't think we have to do it all at once. Um, and I think that, um, that, you know, if we can do it in a, in the spirit of, of, um, starting anew in a way. If not anew, then a, a, a fresh start. Austin is not the village it was. Um, and, um, you know, I hope that we can find an artist. I hope our artist uh, works out because I think he's a very talented young man. Can I just make a point of clarification? Um, yes, there was two surveys out. This survey was sanctioned by the Board of Trustees. The first survey wasn't. So as far as I'm concerned, there was only one survey put out and that was a joint effort of the village board this year to put a survey out. The previous survey was not from the village board. Duly so noted. Duly I'm sorry? I said duly noted. Okay. I just want, cause you know what happens, people grab a hold of things and I'm done. Uh, I just want to uh, respond uh, to one of the points that the mayor said that I hadn't responded to, which is um, the town uses the double arch bridge. So we do something original. Uh, 
uh, my feelings in some ways echo what what you said dana this is our double arch bridge one of the big questions that we get in the village is what's the difference between the town and the village and we spent I'm, I'm sure that maddie and karen now have like a very crisp two sentence thing but it's like well the village is in the town and the town incorporates parts of briarcliff but also some parts that are neither does that make sense no it doesn't make any sense and so um to me the more that we can say yeah like the the town and the village we're all ossining and there's a little bit of briarcliff in there but like we're ossining and this represents ossining to me that's that's great that totally makes sense it's the it's um I don't feel that it's the same kind of differentiation you need. Let's say states have their own state flags. New York, Texas, Colorado, these are different places. And having a flag that represents those places makes sense because we are different places. But it's a real mess. What's the difference between a town and the village? So I to, to differentiate it in that way, graphically, to me, doesn't carry as much value. And I think that it's a, it's a beautiful, iconic, uh, uh, historic part of our village. And in an effort to just try to be original, again, this this now comes down to like very subjective tastes. And I, I don't know how we're gonna figure it out. We'll figure it out somehow, I guess. But my sense is go with what works. Again, my own subjective taste, I think ours looks better. <laughs> Shots fired, take that Dana, do what you will. But uh, I think ours looks better uh, and they'll have to update theirs. And I hope they choose either the something different or something better or I don't know maybe something that incorporates all three municipalities something that's just the town outside I don't know but um that's how I feel about that so let me let me get this uh clear Omar you asking the town board to change their seal I just no, want to be clear that's not what I said what I said was if we're both going to have the same seal I think ours looks better and it may drive okay. them to go, hey, we should update our seal. Ours okay. is not as good looking as the village. And uh, they made so so they make you're making a enough. suggestion for them to update the seals after we do A friendly it. suggestion from, <laughs> <laughs> from, from me, anyway. All right. Yeah. No, no, no. I, and, and that's something, you know, we're not going to, I'm not going to talk about the design, obviously, uh, at this point. Um, I'm going to wait until tomorrow. Uh, and I'm, obviously, we're going to double check with Stuart. Hopefully, um, the artists will actually reach out to store if we get to get an agreement. Uh, I think we can have a deeper discussion right. after that, and then we can go from there. Sorry, man, go ahead. So I, I just want to clarify. I'm not, I'm not interested in having an original design. That is not um, the words that I use, and words are important. Um, I think that if you have separate municipalities, um, and you ask yourself why we even need a seal. So I don't even know why we need a seal. I don't know why every municipality needs a seal, but apparently they do. So to me, if you're a different municipality, for those people who want to have Briarcliff and Austin become one municipality, good for them. They could keep talking about bringing things together. But for people who see this as two municipalities, it isn't about original artwork for me. And I've been doing marketing for decades and it's not a logo for me because we could have a logo uh, the way other municipalities do, and then we can have seals. Many municipalities actually have both. They don't have just one. New York City has a flag for every borough and a flag for the city of New York. Um, it also has different seals for each one of the boroughs, and New York City as a city has. They also all have developed wonderful commissions to look at their seals, many of which have Indians in them, which is why I learned that who knew that New York City, which is a city, um, has five boroughs, each of which has their own stuff. So it isn't unusual. You could argue that it's ridiculous. I am happy to have that conversation with anybody that wants to talk about seals in general, why we have them and how much sign companies must make on it. But if we accept that a municipality should have a seal, and if the purpose of the seal is to make that municipality look like something that is different than other municipalities, then if you accept that premise, that was my point. It isn't about artwork and logos and originality. It is a point of differentiation um, for the seal and, the, and what I think is the purpose of a seal, which is to make it look different. And I do look forward to the artists coming up with different renditions. And yes, if the double arch could look significantly different than the town, that might be a good idea. The way it's drawn today, as was presented, um, you know, 
if I blink a little bit quickly, it looks exactly the same to me. I don't mean to insult the artist because I'm sure he, if he were here, he would disagree with me. But you then take the addition that you do, and then you have to transfer it on to like all sorts of materials. So it never looks exactly like artwork because it is not artwork. It's a seal. So I just want to be clear that if you accept the premises, then for me, it has to look different than other municipalities. If you think that seals are silly to begin with, you know, we can have that conversation too, because I'm not actually sure why we all need seals um, to begin with, but I'm assuming that there's some tradition and history to that about how municipalities have to sign things and do certificates and do payroll checks and have to look different for some reason. Be that as it may, I think we all agree that the public has spoken, specifically the residents plus, plus other people that are not residents who had input, and that we will be moving to update a seal. For me, you have a seal for 70 years. You probably will have one for a few more decades when you update it. Um, it doesn't have to be done in a rush. Nobody here I heard say that. In fact, everybody said, look, here are the steps. I think Trustee Lopez thinks, you know, I'm not sure you need all the steps, you know, because some of the stuff has already been done. I think others are saying, yeah, we need the steps, but that's really where we're at. So we're moving forward with um, updating and creating a new seal for the village of Austin is what I'm learning here tonight. And we have the steps that we have to take as next steps. That's my recap. I think that that's a fair um, estimate of where we are. I do want to conclude on this note. I do not want to belittle the importance because I have gotten many phone calls. The importance that history has for people, the attachment that first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation people who live in this community have to the thing that they believe is theirs and they're very rooted to. I don't want this conversation to seem glib to anybody. I don't want it to seem that any of us don't understand that even for those of us that were not born here there are some of us that have lived here myself included longer than i've lived anywhere else in my life um this is where i had my children this is where i got married this is where I, you know my children have only lived here their entire life and so i don't want anybody to walk away from this conversation and think that it was not taken with the utmost respect and seriousness that it deserves because it has been, and there have been a lot of conversations. So that is sort of where I would like to at least um, move to the next topic in this meeting, unless somebody else has um, some thought on it. I don't think we're voting on anything uh, regarding this. This was a presentation by the board to the public. Not a usual thing, we don't do that many presentations, and we will have it on the website. Um, I don't know if it's tomorrow, but it will be up there for people to look at the results of the um, survey. Mayor, so I just want to clarify, the next steps are to get in touch with the artist and then to um, decide on how many renderings and then to review those renderings and choose among those renderings. Is that right? I actually think at one point we said three renderings, but because I actually thought that I had seen that in writing somewhere, but that could be agreed to when we meet with the artist. I'm wondering if your question actually is, who's meeting with the artist? My question is like, what are the next steps? And who okay. I the believe next we, I believe us as a board should come up with some ideas before we waste the artist's time and then let them do renderings. So, okay, Bob, but the survey actually had some pictorial ideas that the board already had come up with this idea. And Dana and Manny actually spent quite a few weeks getting our input. If you have more, I'm satisfied with the input I gave about uh, what I think it, you know, the idea is if you have more, and I think we did that, and that's why they were able to put it on the survey for ideation, and then an artist will come in and say, oh, okay, so people like the waterfront facing this way, here is my interpretation of that, and then we can, we can do it as five of us, or we could choose two of us to represent the rest of us, for those of us that say, you know what, I'm not so interested at this point in what it actually looks like, um, but if you are why don't you work on it? I don't mean you, Bob. I'm just using the general you uh, might be the next step. This is a suggestion I have. Obviously, staff has to be involved with it because, you know, they're the ones that are going to execute all this. They're the ones that have to sit there and say, yeah, this is doable or no, you know, we can't have 14 pictures on a, a seal, you know. So what is 
what are your thoughts um, on that? I mean, that's what I thought the next steps were. Thank you uh, for sort of making me go through what I think the next steps. Artist has to be met with. The survey had three, four, five, I don't remember, Dana, how many you guys put on there um, to select from if a trustee thinks or anybody in the village staff who has some ideas thinks we should add one or two. The artist has to look at them. A contract has to be done with the artist that says, I got my fingers going on, nobody can see it. So I just realized that because I'm talking with my hands. We're gonna sit there and say to the artist for this amount of money, uh, we have a double arch rendition already done. I don't know if we want to have them redo it. We'd like you to do two or three. And I think that conversation actually was had. He comes back if he wants to move forward and says, yes, we do the contract. He comes back, the board will look at it and we can decide from there. At least those are the next couple of steps. If I stop there, that will probably be enough for now. How's that feel to everybody? Mayor, the work I, session, not I, legislative, so everybody yeah. could speak here. No, I, I agree with that. I, I think it should be, obviously, I, I would love to wait um, for him to get back to store tomorrow, and that will be step one for me uh, on that level. And if he doesn't not communicate with store, let's say by Friday, you know, we'll know what we have to do at that point. Sure, but let's say if he does communicate, we do get, get to an agreement. Um, I think a subcommittee is a great idea is uh, sometimes things move a little bit quicker in that because we're not bound to meet as a board. We can always communicate with the board, but we can definitely, two trustees can definitely meet and meet with artists and, and go from there and come up with a, with a concept idea uh, on that one. So um, I'm not sure if, if that the rest of the board feels um, okay with having a subcommittee in that one. I, I definitely don't want to be part of that. I think um, Buff, it seems to me that you may want to be one of the trustees if the board feels it's appropriate to have a subcommittee in there, but I'm not sure who are the trustee would be willing to be part of that one. Like I said, I'm not. I don't, I'd, be I don't glad, want to be. I'd, be, I'd be glad to work with Dana on that. Okay. Now, is that, I, I know that's what the mayor mentioned as well, is that the rest of the board feels okay with having two, two members of the board as a subcommittee? I, think I'm I usually one. just throw it out there and people, okay. if it's more than two, <laughs> then um, that's fine too. You know, yeah. I'm very big on, you know, distributive management. So uh, we got two people. If more want to be involved, that's fine too. We'll just have to notice the meetings if yeah. three of you or. I, yeah, involved. I just think it's a lot easier doing it that way. So we don't have to, you know, it, yep. it reflects the flexibility of them, you know, working. Um, you know, with the artists, if anything, whoever that may be, hopefully is the one that we want to have them to work on it, obviously. So, but we can go from there. But that okay. would be, to me, step one, getting the communication going by the end of the week, hopefully, and, and go from there. Okay. Okay. Everything, I had a conversation earlier today with a staff member. Everything is not a race to the end. We're not in a race here, folks. Had it for 70 years. We can wait three more days. If the guy's not available till Monday, it's okay. You know, some things have time is of the essence. Uh, some really don't. The big decision has just been made. That's the big headline. Now it's next steps. So thank you for that. We've got the next couple of steps. After that, we'll decide the next couple of steps after that. So we got Dana, we've got Trustee Fritchie, sorry, Trustee White, Trustee Fritchie, raise their hands, volunteer organization. I'm loving it. And um, we're good to go on this topic. Yes, anything else, guys? All righty, we are ready to move on to the next topic, which is proposed um, law number four of 2021, towing discussion. I would like to frame it and say that Stuart Gahan and Captain Georgia is here with us. Uh, uh, Chief Sylvester is not with us tonight. Captain, big moment for you. Because I don't get to I don't get to see you very much. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Pleasure to see you. Um, I don't mean I don't mean to embarrass you, but I do I do like to see you once in a while. So thank you for being here tonight and stepping in. And we're going to make you uh, vote on things and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So when the big uh, boss comes back. He's going to have lots to do, so get ready. Um, I'm excited to talk about this because towing is something that um, we had talked about four years ago, um, how towing is done. It's uh, something I personally am not very familiar with. Um, 
what the prices are, how it's done, how uh, the towing company selected, um, you know, where does one go if there's a problem? I do get some phone calls about it. And I did contact the chief to say that I got um, a, a few community members that said they were confused. They don't know what the charges are. They don't know if they're supposed to get receipts. They don't understand it. It's a mystery. So hopefully um, tonight we might unveil and make it less mysterious. And um, it, the topic will be presented by Stuart Gahan and Captain Georgia. So you're on, gentlemen. Mayor, if I might, I believe that we have Bob Nolan from AAA Nolan and Ray Oakley from A&P Collision, both of whom were sent invitations and wanted to participate tonight. So Jamie, if uh, they can be brought over, I think that would sure. help. It's Mr. Nolan and what was the other name, I'm sorry? Ray Oakley from A&P Collision. Ray Oakley. I don't see Ray Oakley. Oh, oh, that's just right. I see. All right. So I'm going to allow uh, Ray and Mr. Nolan um, to come on over. No problem. Mayor, as, uh, as, we had, as I had said before, we have we'd sent letters to uh, a number of, of the towing companies that are on the rotation list. Uh, Mr. Nolan and Mr. Oakley responded that they wanted to, you know, attend tonight's meeting to discuss the proposed local law. So that's why uh, we brought them over to uh, uh, hear from the operators. They both need to unmute themselves when you're ready to invite them to speak. Okay. Sure. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Oakley and Mr. Nolan, if you want to unmute yourselves and. Uh, Stuart, why don't you just tell them who's going first? They're just, they're just waiting. Uh, well, Mr. Nolan is uh, unmuted first. So uh, Bob, <laughs> if you want to talk, go right ahead. Sure. No problem. Thanks everybody for uh, um, taking me on here. And uh, I just have a few questions, uh, you know, my, uh, I know most of this uh, uh, contract was based on peak skill and peak skill uh, in section 250 sub 040 storage charges. Uh, known most of the bill was derived from peak skill towing charges, which the uh, peak skill law chapter 548 section eight under storage charges. They also include uh, indoor storage fee of $85. Um, you know, I recommend you to look into that because, you know, sometimes the car flips over and all the windows are blown out of it. So sometimes they got, you know, a lot of valuables in there. So if you have to keep it inside, you have to keep it inside. I'm not saying every car has to be inside. I'm just saying that, you know, in certain situations, there is that. Also, um, you know, other um, municipalities have more charges for the towing, like, you know, winching, cleanup, extra truck, uh, extra person, snatch block, wheel dollies, uh, COVID clean. Uh, Austin uh, can ticket a car for an abandoned vehicle, $350, which is back in 2014. You got that in the, in the laws. And uh, we're going to go tow the car for 200 that's abandoned. And you're going to have to send out, uh, you know, certified letters to notify the people, sit on a car that doesn't move, you don't have keys. And uh, so you're kind of like wasting your space. And everybody knows this space in Austin is not cheap. And uh, also, uh, you know, I, I suggest that like uh, every towing company should have like a private, uh, a, a, a proper office with signage that, you know, shows uh, where their lot is and, you know, so the people know that that's the company and they have an office uh, for that. And uh, also um, maybe uh, during the course of this rotation, uh, equal, uh, have an equitable uh, audit of uh, towing rotation distribution uh, should be done like once every three years to uh, ensure that everybody is treated equally. And, you know, there's no, nobody getting you know, any kind of, you know, the rotation just does its thing. And, uh, and that's about it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Mr. Oakley, you're, you're up. Good evening. I uh, have to say Mr. Nolan did his homework. And uh, I agree with most of the things he's uh, brought out tonight. Um, me, I'm kind of more of a listener and want to see how everybody feels before I make any uh, recommendations or give any opinion on uh, 
what uh, what changes should be made. Sure. So uh, I'd like to hear what you all have to say about what we do before I offer any opinion or uh, suggestions. Thank you, Mr. Oakley. I appreciate that. Uh, well, folks, I know that we've had a discussion on this proposed local law before. Uh, one of the reasons we set this up tonight was to get some feedback from the uh, uh, tow truck companies and their operators. Uh, uh, and we did, as I said, we got some, uh, some feedback here from uh, Mr. Nolan with regard to uh, some of the fees and some issues relating to the uh, charges in peak skill, uh, the idea of uh, indoor storage uh, and some other points. Uh, I don't know if there's anything from the uh, trustees perspective that they uh, would want to add or anything like that uh, before we see if there's anything more that Mr. Oakley wants to add. Um, I, I just was hoping that also uh, Captain Georgia would, um, before we get to all the trustees asking questions, I'd like to hear from Captain, um, how does the towing work? How uh, I'm hearing a rotation. I don't know much about how that works. So I'd like to get an understanding. How does the police department choose the towing vendors? How do they include them in a rotation? And I'd like to hear, if possible, from Captain, how do they call a towing company when they need one? I mean, those are three things just right off the top of my head um, that I would like to get a better understanding of on, uh, plus anything else, Captain, that you want to add before I open it up to the trustees to ask specific questions. Okay. Um, typically, the, the towing is based out of our, um, our records management system. So we have impact and the tow companies are listed in impact with their phone numbers and contact information. So what that, what that software does is it allows, once we call a tow truck, it then switches the list and it puts another one on top of the list. So we call out for um, a tow. Uh, if that tow company doesn't answer or doesn't call back, we go move to the next one on the list and the, the truck will go there. Um, the, the problem with the impact system is I don't believe if that tow company isn't used, it's been a while since I've been on the desk, but if the tow company is not used, I believe I don't. I believe they stay on top. I don't think. Um, I know Ray um, could probably elaborate on that um, as far as getting contact if they pass up a, a call. But um, typically, what we do is if we had um, what we use a tow for would be for motor vehicle accidents, um, arrests, evidence, and um, a lot of the time. You know, the vehicle has to be moved, um, you know, pretty quick out of the roadway if it is creating a hazard. Um, so uh, I, I was kind of reading over um, some of the uh, proposal here, and I see, like, signing the, uh, having the, the owner sign an authorization before the vehicle is towed. I don't know where that would fit in um, with um, an incident where that vehicle had to be removed from the roadway for safety purposes. Um, but typically what we do, and then, you know, what we would do is if we had um, a stolen vehicle that was recovered or something that would be evidence, we have our own storage up at the armory and we have a garage up there where the vehicle would be taken to. Otherwise, if it was um, an arrest for, say, um, aggravated unlicensed operator, uh, if we impounded the vehicle, um, one of the tow companies would come, they would pick it up, and they would bring it to their yard for storage. Now, once that person um, can have that vehicle removed, whether it's by um, another licensed operator or if it was a suspended registration, they show that they cleared up the suspension, uh, they come to headquarters and they get an impound release that they take to the tow company. They present it to the tow company, and um, the fees are charged up there with them and vehicles released. That's how it would work if it was somebody that was um, arrested. Um, as far as an accident goes, um, the vehicle would be towed up there and um, it was a result that it was an impound that we um, had done. 
uh, we would also do an impound release uh, for that as well. And that stays, um, you know, in our records management system as well. It's another tab under our impound and everything's tracked under that. So, um, you know, there are times where um, wreckers are utilized. Not everyone has a wrecker. That's for large tractor trailers. Um, typically that's more of a um, accident or, you know, blocking traffic or something along those lines. That's when we would then call a wrecker out um, to, to remove uh, something of that size. I know that's um, pretty costly. I don't know the numbers on that. I know, again, Ray probably knows, um, you know, the expense of the wrecker as well. Um, that's uh, pretty much our end as far as the, the law enforcement end of it and you know, when we would um, impound a vehicle. Um, well, obviously snowstorms as well. There, there are times when, you know, we, we claim a snow emergency, vehicles in the roadway. We make every effort to contact uh, the owner. We run the plate, we check our system, and we really try every, every way possible to get that vehicle moved before we have to tow it. Unfortunately, sometimes we do have to tow it, um, and that would be removed. As well. We also had incidents down at the train station where it flooded and we were having the cars moved um, out of there because of flooding. So, but, um, you know, tow companies, we really don't have a problem with them being responsive. They, they get there pretty quick and, you know, that, that's comforting to know that we do have uh, tow companies that, that are on the ball and are quick to respond. So that's helpful for us. And uh, thank you, Captain. Additional question. How many uh, toes would you say, just ballpark or not, you know, I don't know if you had a chance to look at, if it's a computerized system, I'm sure there are sort of records and reports that could be generated. How many per month would you say? How many times the tow trucks get called a month? Uh, if I was to give you something off the top of my head, it would be a total disservice to, to everybody at this meeting. I, I, I don't know, um, know where we're at a month. Um, okay. Well, I'm sure it's something we can get. I yeah, no, I'm yeah, just trying to get a ballpark. Yeah. Single digit, double digit, triple tri digit. I'm just trying to get a sense of the scope, uh, not really um, the exact. And I'm sure you can get that to in a, in a month. Yeah. In a month? Yeah. It'd be high double digits, I would have to say. Okay. So, um, yeah. We, we do quite a few toes. But I don't have that outside my head. Okay. So the way it's distributed is uh, in order on a computerized system that goes to number one, then number two, then number three, then number four, then number five, and starts again at number one when that ends. Um, so there's an equal distribution of how um, tow trucks are called for service, theoretically, if I, if I got that right. That's, I'm just trying to understand that I heard yes, it. Yes, right. every, every attempt is made to have it distributed equally, yes. Okay, more or less. I'm sure that there are exceptions. I'm sure there are issues, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, okay. there are times where, yeah, mistakes are made, and I know, you know, I apologize to the ones who are listening in. Um, you know, mistakes do happen, and, you know, it, sometimes it, it, it doesn't go the way we plan. So. Okay. Um, I just wanted to get a scope. I'm sure other people have questions. Um, I'm not all that familiar with towing. I unfortunately have not been towed in the 20 some odd years that we've lived here. Um, so that's a good thing, but um, I understand tow trucks. My father had a towing business. He had a Texaco station with a towing, but not with the police. And the pricing is another issue. Um, people are always surprised at how expensive it is to tow cars, even a short distance. Um, so, That'll be something I want to ask more specifically about, but I do want to open it up. Is there anything else that you saw in the legislation before we opened it up, Captain, that uh, you already mentioned one thing. Anything else that strikes you as sort of either being odd or not realistic or that we should, that the trustee should think about before I open it up to everybody else that you would like to share with us? Um, one thing I noticed is in uh, 250, 36 notice of removal. I don't know what that pertains to. Uh, Stuart, I don't know if you can clarify. So the village shall also, without delay, report to the village clerk the removal or disposition of any vehicle removed as provided in this article. Is that 
saying that every time the police department impounds a vehicle, the clerk's office has to be notified? Is that how I'm reading that? Or Yes. That's actually in the code now. Oh, is it? That's something. All right. <laughs> I was we learn something new every day on this job. Yes. That's really the truth. I'm not being funny. I mean, I, I actually do believe that these, these are jobs that every day, all good intentions around the table here, but just uh, we do learn something new. So that's why it's great that we're discussing this. Anything else uh, that you would like to, um, your point of view, even a personal point of view, reading it or that we should know about? Um, as far as the permitting of the truck and the operator. Um, was there a discussion um, as far as the PD being the ones to do the permitting on that? Or like, was it was it maybe part of the conversation of the clerk's office doing it or us doing it? I believe this legislation has that it would be through the PD. Uh, yeah. similar, similar to some extent to what is now done with the taxi. Yeah, that's kind of sort sort of a joint effort. All right, I kind of figured that. Is that what you think should happen? I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding. Are you getting clarification? Is that happening what you think uh, should happen? That the police department uh, should be the place to do it? I don't know if the somebody else said. I'm not even sure why it needs to be when DMV approves it, but um, what is the reasoning here? I, I just think... You know, if, if there is going to be, it, it seems like, okay, we do the permitting, but the money's handled up the clerk's office. We don't handle any of the, any of the money. So if the permitting was going to be done up there, it's all done in one centralized location, if it was possible. I don't, I don't know, you know, if that is something that, um, that we have to do. I don't know how it works. Who are you asking, does Stuart? This, does this lean something similar to what they do with taxis? Yes, trustee. Yes, yes. Okay. And you know, we do we do the inspections on the taxis. We do the inspections on the tow trucks. You know, just like we like we've done with the taxis. That that's that's not an issue on our end. Just the enforcement. So how do you how do you do the? I'm sorry, Bob. So my I guess there is I'm just gonna. Ask the question. So the taxis are done. Is there they're given a sticker or something that notifies that they're they're up to snuff and all that stuff? Am I right or no? Or it's just notified just noticed? Um, they do get a sticker saying they're up to snuff. They also have a um, you know a license that they keep with them when the operator is um, okay. permitted to, to, use, to use a taxi. Okay. And does this the same with the tow trucks or or, or is it? Uh, I you know, I, may, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. Yeah, we're not there yet with the permitting of the operators. So that's what's new in this proposal here. And having that done, I would imagine that they would be um, furnished with the same kind of identification and uh, permit that we get with the past. All right. Thank cool. you. Stuart, I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since we talked about this, uh, this proposal. So forgive me if I ask, would it be okay to read it? Because I'd like to hear it. I don't know about the other board members. Then I'd like to get the, the feel from the uh, the stru fee structure that's in there and what the, the tow companies feel about that fee structure. Or is it like, is it too lengthy? It's a, are you on your, because it's, there's a link to it. Um, it's Hold on. All right, never mind. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. It's nine pages. If you, you know. Yeah, that's that's. It's long. Yeah, that's the only reason I bring it up, Bob. It's you're pretty long. It, Dana, you're moving it too fast. I can't read that quick. Here, read it. Oh. <laughs> There's this many pages. I'll find it. So, <clears throat> I guess, Bob, while you read that, um, Captain, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, so some of the suggestions of Mr. Law Nolan uh regards to uh peace kill and what peace kill does in some other municipalities in regards to some of the additional fees what do you think uh it'd be something appropriate since that we don't have those obviously and one of the discussions that we, that we had with the chief is um you know a secure location to store the cars uh obviously so that's that's something that i think um is a, it was a, it was something that was brought up last time um i believe the chief at that time um, did not have an answer for us uh, if that was if that's my recollection 
um, when I asked that question, how many, how many of the facilities do we have right now that will meet those criteria? Uh, do you, is that something that, um, that, that you can talk about that a little bit more? I, I don't think the chief had that information at the time. Do you, are you aware of how many facilities do we have that have the secure location here in Austin? The, the ones that we have right now, it's under rotation? The ones that currently tow for us? Um, I'd have to see how many current toes we have, but um, I don't have the exact number of the, the secured lots. Um, I know you also mentioned my input on the and that, you know what Mr. Nolan mentioned about the fees, the additional fees of security and stuff like that. Um, that is a little bit different than what we have. Um, is that something that, you know, I'm asking your opinion and I'll be asking the board as well if you think, uh, if you guys think it was appropriate for us to add it, some of those um, additional information that, you know, the municipalities have, some of the things that we always have looked in to, to make it an equal uh, balance to what other municipalities do in regards to fees and stuff like that. So this may be an opportunity for us to look into that as well. But I was asking Captain if um, you think that's something appropriate as well because you guys deal with that most of the time, obviously, so. so. My understanding reading this, unless I, I missed something, was that the tow company is gonna have to have a secure lot. Is that correct? We, yes, that's what so, it's in there now. Yeah, so I don't know about charging an additional fee for having a secured lot. Bringing it indoors, I, I think that could be explored because that's taking up space for them where they actually do the work on, on the vehicles and I, I could see that maybe being a, a, a greater expense or a higher fee I should say. Um, that's how I feel about it as far as the as far as the uh, the indoor storage but you know if we did have a stolen vehicle we, we keep those indoors. Yeah, uh, Captain from it seems that you know, we have that in the low right now moving forward that is to be in a secure location. So out of the companies that we work with them right now on the rotation, are you aware if all those companies meet those criteria? I don't believe all of them meet that criteria. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open it up to others. My questions before, I don't even qualify as my questions because they're really points of clarification for everybody. Um, I'm having a little bit of a problem here um, in understanding the scope. Does anybody, so I'll, I'll go last, but what, does anybody else have any questions? I'm gonna play, I'm gonna be the dumb one here and say, okay, I'm new to this and, and I wanna make sure I understand what we're talking about. So we're looking at new legislation um, that governs um, tow companies that we use to remove cars for a variety of reasons. And there's a list of these tow companies. And when the police department needs a car towed, they go to the list and they start at the top and they, and when somebody says, we'll come take care of that, they do it. Is that what, is that right? Yes. Okay. So what we're discussing are changes to the legislation for all sorts of things related to this, which is actually way more complicated than, than you would think. Um, including what it caught, including what the tow companies charge us to do this or what we want them. I, that's what I'm, that's the thing I'm, a little confused about is um, in terms of fees. Um, so if somebody could help me. That's the fee that they charge to the person who's being towed. It's person not, being the towed. not the village. Okay. Um, all right. So are there a lot of differences from this from the old legislation to this? Yeah, everything that's underlined is the there difference. Was, there was no old but there was no there was no old legislation, Trustee. Oh, okay. It's all new. I said I'm new here. Um, but you've talked about this before. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. I'm up to speed now. Okay. I'm not broken down in the passing lane anymore. I am now up to speed. Well, <laughs> anybody else? I don't think the 
I don't think this is going to change the rotation any. I think the rotation aspect will, will stay the same. Um, it would just, I, I see one of the biggest as being the fee schedule and the permit. I, I would actually disagree with that statement, uh, but I'm going to, um, I would say, Dana, that you recapped it, but um, my problem is that we're looking at it from a legislative point of view because we're legislatures, but um, we're also, we represent the public and the conversation starts and ends with the public that we represent. Um, the tow truck companies are also our constituents and the police department is uh, part of the departments. Um, this conversation started four years ago when we received complaints um, of discriminatory prices. And I don't mean discriminatory, well, discriminatory is probably not a great word to use right now. Let, let me reframe that in that people did not know what they were supposed to pay. People felt that different people were paying different fees, depending on the towing company. And by the way, why is there no information? This is from a public perspective, okay? Why is there no information anywhere to tell me, a member of the public, that when my car got towed at one in the morning, that where I go and how much I'm supposed to pay, and I show up at eight in the morning and I go to some tow company, I don't have a car because it was towed. So, you know, I take a cab. I don't know where my car is because I can't find where it is. But when I do find it, um, I'm told that it's $328.42. I don't get a receipt for it. I don't know who to talk to about this. So these are real people. Over time, other things took priority, all sorts of super important things, believe me. Tow trucks is not why most, and towing is not why most people run for office. But a number of months ago, I started receiving calls again that says, seriously, like, when are you guys gonna post what I'm supposed to pay if my car is towed? And by the way, what are rules are in place? And by the way, who chooses these tow companies? And by the way, like, how do I find my car? And why is the police in charge of it? And there were all these questions. So that's a frame of why we're having this conversation. Because when you do try to find the answers to this, as some of us have done, it's very difficult. And it turns out, as you stated so eloquently, as you always do, Dana, it's never as simple as it looks. The problem I'm having is that while we're looking at legislation as a solution, legislation isn't the problem here. The problem is, that the five people that need to make some decisions aren't that sure. I'm not sure that the five of us understand how any of this works. I find it for me personally uncomfortable making decisions. I, I like I don't need to know like how the water plant works from A to Z to make a decision about the water plant. So I don't need to know how tow trucks work. I don't need to know how Bobby Nolan does his business. I don't need to know why we chose the computer system we did at the police department. But after hearing today's conversation and, and the last conversation we had, I'm pretty sure that the five of us don't really um, have a great grasp as a group. I don't mean individually. I'm sure some of you are very knowledgeable that I'm able to tell a person like I passed this legislation. It makes sense because I appreciate Stewart's request to have the tow companies come and talk to us. But um, I don't know how to pass what we're passing, except that somebody, some other municipality has a similar law because it's not a minor change to an existing law as Stuart just pointed out. It's actually pretty new to us and I'm not sure how much involvement except for today's meeting, Stuart, that you've had with the tow companies except for today. And one person came and read it and said, these are some issues I have. And another person said, I wanna listen because I'm not sure what you all are looking for. So I'm having a, a, just a personal conflict, which I don't have very often how I'm even going to vote on this, because I don't think I know who gets to choose who the players are, the computer system used, like how things are done. Are there any audits? I don't know if Dale does audits on these system or some IT person. I mean, like I, I have no clue. All I know is that there are people out there getting their cars towed and don't understand some basic preliminary things that they should be able to understand. How, why, when, where, and who do I call when I feel that I'm not being charged fairly? Um, so I'm not real comfortable um, with this right now. I'm just going to be very honest. I'm with you in the same camp as um, I don't know what's going on kind of thing, Dana, and I have no excuse that I'm new. 
I don't know what to do with this, though, to be honest with you. So if somebody can help me out and tell me what they think the next steps are, I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to use that excuse as long as I can. But um, it seems I need more time to, to study this. Um, but obviously, everybody, it should be equitable, and everyone should be treated fairly, and nobody should have to pay more than anybody else or less than anybody else. And... Um, you know, when you get your car towed and you come out and you expect to find your car and it's gone and you're like, where's my car? Um, that sets off a whole sequence of events, right? And I think that we should make it as easy as possible for people whose cars are towed for whatever reason to be able to find their car, get it back, depending on why it was towed. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully not have to take out a second mortgage to do so. So, um Again, I don't get told a lot either. So we'll I wanted to just change something that I said, and and you, when you just talked, you you brought that to my attention. When I when I talked about equitable before, I meant for the consumer. I didn't mean to just for a public. I also meant for the towing companies. I meant for both for all parties concerned. I just want to, as you were talking, I realized I I, I look at it from our the public's point of view, but I do want to say that the towing companies also have not only rights, but they're part they're they're part of this too. You know. How many towing companies are on the list? Five. And they're all local. Correct. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, so I feel um, differently than the mayor. When uh, I read this, it seemed pretty straightforward to me. It was pretty, I mean, it's long, it's detailed. I would imagine only Stuart and these towing companies would know <laughs> chapter and verse uh, exactly what this says. Uh, I can recall it. I can't recall this stuff, but um, to me, it harkens back to conversations from back when I started paying attention to this stuff of uh, like a boot. And, and and so that we're removing uh, language around a boot that seems like not relevant. But we're adding all this other language um, around how towing happens, um, how one gets their car back, how much. Uh, to me, it elucidates all those things. The kinds of concerns that the mayor and uh, uh, Dana you brought up uh, are so sol those are solvable problems to me that largely uh, are communications issues that whether it's up, we update our website if i had my car impounded or uh so this i, I it was a perfect example actually i i can i i had i parked at the train station one time and i left town for a few days i came back and my car was gone and the first thing that i did was call the austin police department and say hey my car's gone where is it <laughs> and they said What's your car information? I gave them the information. They said, we didn't take it. We'll write down your information for a stolen car report. And I got home. I took a cab home. And then I was talking to my wife about it. And then I realized, wait, the parking lot was full when I parked. I actually parked it on the other side of the parking lot, not where I usually park it. And I went there and it was there. And that's the whole story, right? The car wasn't stolen. I just parked it in the wrong spot. But like, where did I go to get my information? My immediate thought was, let me go to the police. And I went to the police. If it had been uh, towed, they would have had that information. And they could have told me it was towed. Here's where it is. Here's where you can get it, et cetera. To me, that is where most people in the village are going to go to get their information. And if the question is, are they being charged too much? Or is the process unclear or whatever? This language here makes it pretty explicit what it is that these companies should be charging and uh, what all that should look like. And if it's too much, then we can have that conversation. But in terms of, is this clear? Does this make sense? To me, uh, it is clear. And if there are parts that are unclear, those are the parts that I would want to discuss. Thank you, Omar. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll go next. And, um, you know, this is not something that we've been talking about just last year. This is something that we've been talking about for several years. When I say several years, uh, Lieutenant uh, Richard Amiano brought this over or part of this uh, several years back. Um, I want to say maybe three years, four years ago, Stuart, maybe yes. three years ago. Uh, so this is not something new. 
Uh, this is not, and, and, and I want to be very specific, this is not just about the towing companies. This is more, uh, this, this law has more details to it. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I do want to make sure that we all, we all here, all the five of us, uh, feel comfortable uh, passing something. So if, the, if we need more time, an extra week, I, I don't have a problem with that. But I want to make sure that we all feel comfortable uh, passing something. Again, is, um, I have heard these issues that the police has with there's an abandoned car um, that they can't do anything about it. Uh, you know, there's people that have called me that said, look, I don't have a registration, but I keep getting tickets and I cannot solve this issue. Those are issues that we have to resolve. Those are issues that we can resolve. Um, you know, uh, with the, the, the Omar mentioned about the booth, exactly. That was part of one of the changes that we made, that we are making here. Uh, that was one of the issues that Lieutenant Damiano had. He brought that back into this and the store is bringing this back now. So if we need an extra week, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with what is being uh, proposed here. Um, what I was asking here, and, and I will reach out to, uh, to either Ray or, or, or Robert Nolan in regards to what the other stuff uh, they didn't mention about peace killing, the additional, uh, additional fees. I would love to hear from them. I'll, have, I'll reach out to them myself and just see if that makes sense for us to add it. And, and if we do have to add it, I'll bring it back to the floor next time that we have this conversation in here. Uh, but, you know, again, I want the five of us to feel comfortable uh, on, on reading this and passing this resolution at some point, but I, I wouldn't want to wait a future board another two years. That's all I'm asking to the board. Uh, we've been waiting long enough to, to pass something. And again, it's been about more than three years. That's all I'm gonna say. Where is the fee? It's a, I, I'm looking for the fee structure. The, is it in here? Yes, I'll, one second, trustee, where I'll find it for you, okay? There's a couple of different places where the fee structure is discussed. Uh, the storage charge, uh, 250-39 uh -huh. and 250-40. Okay. Towing charges. So bit maximum basic charge for towing of disabled motor vehicles at the direction of the Village of Austin, $200. Yes, ma'am. Maximum additional charge for recovering from a ditch or other place, 75 per hour. Um, storage fees. You know, I, you know, I, I don't know. The time companies know much better than I how much it costs to do these things. So, you know, I mean, you don't want them to do these things for a loss, I assume, you know. I mean, $200, I guess, sounds fair. Okay, so if you guys don't mind, I'd like to take another week. I'll tell you why. Um, this is very detailed. This is good stuff. That was not an implication that it wasn't good stuff. Uh, there's just some things in here that I think I want to hear more from um, the towing companies. So I'd like to give them uh, some more time to contact either Stuart or any of the trustee directly. Um, I also want to understand how the towing companies are actually chosen because I hear that there is a system place and I heard Bobby Nolan ask that um, the systems in the process also uh, might and should be audited so that future trustees don't have these conversations and that we have the ability to say people, listen, this is how it works. Here's where it exists. This is what one, I mean, if you put a nine page thing like this up there, I'm not sure from a communication point of view what it's gonna do. It's gonna be, it's gonna have to be written in a more usable language for a consumer to be able to say how much, when, where, and answer those questions. So I'd like to take a little bit if it doesn't bother anybody. I don't wanna hold up the rest of the meeting with conversation because I could put some of my stuff in writing. I have more questions and I do answers, uh, but I do want the towing and, um, for the two folks that showed up out of the five companies that we have, um, or any other companies, if you, I, I guess your competitors, maybe you don't want to call each other, but um, I would appreciate getting some input, even like just one page email that says, you know, this is too high, this price is too low. We want to get a better understanding of how the tow, 
companies are decided upon, that it's not decided by an individual in the police department, but, but by a legitimate like computerized system. Um, because at a double digit number per month, you're talking about um, an actual sum of revenue that is meaningful, if I'm reading this correctly. And that needs to be done in a very, um, in a way that can be audited, the way we would audit any place that is involved in money, whether they accept the money directly or whether it's accepted by someone else. There's money being transferred here and that needs to be looked at. I'm not sure it's part of legislation, but it should be part of how we do things. So I'd like to do at least um, one more week. I don't know if there's a rush on this to um, get some more input than the two gentlemen who thank you for showing up tonight, but to actually give one more week now that we've discussed it, now that it's obvious that nine pages of this legislation for me um, may not get to the root of things. And also captain, it would be helpful to get some data in a meeting, like it doesn't have to be uh, any more than an email, like I'd actually like to know how does the system work that in fact, um, if you look at it and you run a report that you see that it's not the same one or two companies that constantly somehow get the business that, um, you know, that it's a high double digit or a low double digit per month, we should have a sense of what it is. Our job, I think, is to make it palatable for people when they get their cars towed. I mean, that's really part of what we have to make sure, but it would be nice to know that we have a good system and that we're not discussing this again next year and the year after that, that we do this once and done and be done with this um, for the next two to three or four years before the next, you know, future boards have to decide. Is that okay with everybody or is everybody ready to vote on it except for me? There's no vote, Mayor. Not to vote, but is everybody okay with holding the discussion for a little bit more time to get some more information from more towing companies in the area? Uh, I'm good with that. So I'm okay with that. To the next okay. I'm good. Right. I just, I just, I think I'd like to see, like you say, the towing company just review what we have in there, and um, it's like. If you want a ham and cheese sandwich or do you want ham? Is there more for cheese? Is there, you know, there's pieces of the puzzle that we all need to be on an even plane between all the tone companies. So if it's $200 for this and it's another hundred to get you out of a ditch versus 200, just pick, picking you off from a car accident on the road, you know, there's, you know, that I think that all needs to be, you know, on an even plane. So, and the list is, it's pretty simple, you know, but you know, they call, give me the next one off the list. And if they answer, great. They don't, they go to the next person. And it's, and it's, it's a simple rotation process. But um, if okay. you want more information, then you're entitled to that. But, um, you know, I think I'd like to get feedback from the tow companies. You know, the, take a look at what, what's in there. All right. And, you know, is that feasible? You know, because we're not looking to, to, to um, break anybody's back. But, you know, they're in business also. So, you know, if there's, if it's a la carte, then it's a la carte, you know, and there's a one fee, you know. So I, I that's just some information I'd like to see. Trustee Fritchie, I just want to make the point that not only were letters sent to the five companies, they were all provided with copies of the legislation. Okay, no, that's great. Oh, no, you know, but no, but I just want, because I, I don't want it to be implied that they didn't get it. They all, they all. Oh, no, 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 I'm, no, no. Nobody's I, implying that. No, I'm not well, implying that at all. I just, I, I just wanted I, it to be clear for the record. That's fine. Okay. Record's clear. Um, uh, I just, like I said, just like some feedback from those guys. That's right. all. Right. The all truth nice. is that until we discuss it sometimes, like people aren't focused on things. And now that we've discussed it, I'm sure that the two gentlemen on the call might call somebody's going to say, hey, you know, you're being given an opportunity, use it, waste it, it's up to you. You use it or waste it, but we're in because we're going to have a say in this and that's it. So I'd like it. To, I'd like to just give it a little bit more time. I'm not in a rush. Um, and I also want the police department to manage some of this to actually give us data. And um, no offense, Captain Georgia, but like actual numbers would, would be helpful for the scope. It's not, it's not, you're probably right. It probably is a double digit, a high double digit, but I just like to see the numbers and I like I to see how many companies. I was unaware that you wanted numbers this evening or else I oh. would have 
That's and, and that's why we should just give it a little more time because of course not. I don't think we actually asked for it. Why would you be aware? Because we didn't ask for it. So now we're asking and we'll have it. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, asking th people for things doesn't mean we're complaining about anything. It's just, we're just asking for something so that we know. Um, so a little bit more time and I think we're good. Thank you, Stuart, for putting all this together. Um, it gives the trustees and also anybody listening now including uh, people that may have their opinion as the people who have been towed uh, an opportunity to uh, let us know what's going on. And um, this is great. So thank you all. I don't see anybody else not seeing anything. Okay, I think we can move on. Thank you, folks. Uh, uh, Mayor, uh, I can uh, probably oh. email, email uh, in depth about the whole contract to uh, Stuart. Uh, by the end of the week for them to get them a little more uh, educated on what goes on in the towing side. That'll be great. Thank you very much. Okay, Appreciate no it. Problem. Appreciate it. Thank you okay, all. folks. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, we're moving on to next topic. So the next topic is our... Um, project status update for the first quarter, which I will be presenting. And then Dale will be presenting uh, the 2020 budget and uh, 21, 2021 budget uh, projections. So, Matt, do you wanna, thank you. Hello, Dale. All right, so good evening, everybody. Oh, sorry, Karen, you're still on with the project. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was, uh, Sorry. anyway, um, so just the purpose of this presentation is to refresh the board and bring everybody up to speed, but also to be able to talk publicly so that the public has an idea of how the board sets its projects, um, how priorities are determined, and uh, what really is the, the strategy behind um, our project selection. So first off, um, the projects are identified um, typically, but not always, but um, staff will bring uh, projects, things come up during the course of the year, so they'll be discussed. Um, usually we do a lot of this discussion uh, during budget season, but also at work sessions like these, and, and with uh, staff guidance, the Village Board of Trustees makes decisions on what projects are going to go forward, and the criteria um, used to make those decisions includes uh, a range of questions. Uh, most importantly, does it address a predominant uh, community need or concern, a very important one. Uh, but also, more frequently, is it aligned with our commitment to environmental sustainability? So uh, whether it's a capital project or sometimes even policy, tending more and more to look at, through the, look at things through the lens of environmental sustainability and how that can be optimized um, with the products, uh, project selected. Is it necessary to improve operational efficiency? Um, that, that is a key objective too. We always want things that make things more efficient, uh, that help us in, in revenue generation in an efficient way, but also um, responding to our resident needs as well as in an inefficient way and helping to run more efficiently. What commitment is required of departments and staff? A really important question. So is this something that's going to require consultants? Is it something that um, we're going to have to hire additional staff? How does that figure into the cost of the project? Um, and is it a responsible use of government funds? Are we making sure that we're using uh, government funds in an appropriate way? Um, you know, that's an important consideration when you're, when you're managing municipal budgets and you're looking at product projects that really need to provide a, a wide expanse of public good. Um, cost effectiveness also important. And does it support our community's vision and values? Um, also very important as we've heard in our discussions tonight. So um, it's a range of the criteria that we use to discuss how we establish a project. Um, for 2021, our projects are fall into three focus areas, uh, planning and development, community services, and operations and internal policy. 
So for planning and development, we have things like the comprehensive plan, DPW site development, um, our parking study and our road diet study, as well as our 200 Main Street uh, remediation. Community services are exactly what it sounds like, but things that really bring benefit to the community. Um, the Youth Bureau, um, establishing the Youth Bureau is a, is a big one for youth uh, community services that have been uh, long awaited here. Um, economic development, environmental sustainability, again, more and more. We wanna make sure that that is the running theme through everything that we do. Uh, quality of life. Um, this is a really important one. This is the one we get the most calls about. So whether this is issues relating to code enforcement and sanitation and really making sure us is, um, is living up to the vision and values that we have for, for that all of us have for the community. Um, this year and last year, COVID was um, dictated some of our projects and, and how we worked around our projects as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that more, um, but between uh, projects that were changed uh, based on our response and also some long-standing ways we're gonna be working with the community COVID-19 that emerged as a result. Operations and internal policy, uh, most, uh, the biggest project that we have coming up is the a uh, new water treatment plant that's been uh, in the planning stage for quite some time. We're gonna be looking at a greatly enhanced uh, water uh, treatment facility. Um, we are also looking at public facility improvements for 16 Croton Avenue and our rec center. Keeping with our, our grant acquisition, uh, community development block grant, a new round is uh, open and those uh, go for infrastructure. So we'll be applying for those. We're also looking at internal policies and in our intermunicipal agreements that we have with um, other entities and, and municipalities, and as well as sustainable infrastructure. So again, constant um, environmental sustainability. So when we look at planning and development, we look at these projects and, and they're all standalone projects. They, they all stand on their own, but there are also projects that are strategically aligned and integrated to address immediate and long-term goals regarding economic development, placemaking, land use, recreation, and quality of life, and they're based on community input. So while they stand alone, synergistically, they're, they're far more impactful. Um, so right now we're finishing up with the comprehensive plan, which provides the vision and, and the roadmap uh, for, for the community with uh, a lot of community input. And when we get community input, it usually uh, focuses at some point or another on the issues of parking. Um, and we have many varied issues around parking uh, that we're dealing with now um, through, not through uh, consolidated funding application in 2019, we're doing a parking and mobility study. And it's really looking at some of the most pressing issues um, of uh, where our parking is, how we can get better efficiency from our municipal lots, and also um, ways we can address hardship parking and, and other issues as well as mobility issues. So looking forward, um, you know, where we're going to put charging stations, different uh, modes of transportation besides just cars that we can facilitate, be they trolleys or scooters or all kinds of things that, that are in the offing. Um, and mobility leads us to our Route 9 diet. So Route 9, um, the road diet is, is what it sounds like. It's, it's making uh, Route 9 from around Cedar Lane uh, down to Cedar Place, just that much thinner. Uh, taking a lane away, we're looking at taking a, a creating, a, going from four lanes to two lanes. Um, running either way, north and south, and uh, adding some parking. Greater connectivity between Main Street and Croton Avenue, which is something we've talked about a lot. We have like a natural divide. Um, it's it's a, not a particularly safe street to cross, and we're looking at all different things that will make that street more of a destination um, rather than a place where you drive by very quickly. Um, that leads us to another project that we got consolidated uh, funding. We, we got through the consolidated funding application and that's our remediation grant for 200 Main Street. So 200 Main Street is, is our empty bank building that most recently had uh, the mask on it. 
Uh, it's been empty for some time, but it is a really important landmark in our community. And the remediation will help us to position it um, so that it's much more marketable and desirable. But the road study is going to help that too, because one of the challenges of that building is lack of accessible parking. Um, and, and the road diet not only looks at um, narrowing the road and creating greater connectivity, but it also looks at creating uh, green spaces and islands, which also can be useful to businesses, whether it's the bank building business or, or business, as we know, to, to foster things like outdoor dining, which is becoming uh, very much uh, something desirable and, and we have limited space to accommodate that. And then we're looking at our riverfront, the DPW site. So we're taking a former organic waste yard or current organic waste yard and looking at it for the development of a mixed income, mixed use, all affordable building um, that hits a lot of marks on things that we need in the community, um, housing, affordability, green space. Um, and it's an important transit hub that's been somewhat neglected over the years. And that's actually a, a, a you know, we don't think of Station Plaza as being a, a, a densely populated uh, community, but it, it, that's a real neighborhood and it's, it's been neglected. And this is a way to revitalize that neighborhood by, but, but still making space and improving it as well and preserving the level of affordability. And if you look at the map um, in the lower right hand corner, this is actually taken from our um, downtown um, downtown uh, revitalization initiative grant that we, we submitted in 2019. And although we did not uh, win the DRI, the $10 million funds, we were a finalist. And these projects were highlighted in that application. And we subsequently got grant funding for some of them through the consolidated funding application through New York State. But the idea of looking at uh, 200 main, Main Street as, as the gateway to Main Street and uh, going all the way down to the riverfront and revitalizing um, partly with the DPW site um, and addressing the, the ongoing parking issues address not only things that in this comprehensive plan, but things that were evident in the 2009 plan as well. Maddie, you can go on, thanks. Um, community services, once again, Everything stands alone, but everything builds too. So we have, we know that uh, projects to, to, that are designed to improve community resources are really enhanced greatly when we maximize the synergies that are inherently uh, evident and, and exist um, throughout our community services. And combining that with um, more impactful quality of life measures, um, through that we can even drive better support and uh, of our values and visions in our community, our value and vision for our community. So economic development is something that also comes up um, often. And, and certainly now as we're looking at recovery, uh, it is a really important thing that's on the minds of all of us in our small businesses, um, especially here in Austin. Um, one of the things that, uh, we have certain limitations as a government on what we can do to drive economic development. We're a small government. We don't have dedicated resources to that, but we are looking right now, one of our projects is investigating uh, quasi-governmental entities, either a business, uh, business improvement district or a local development corporation that can be used to uh, drive more funding to our businesses and access more funding as well. And, and the mayor spoke before about funding that's available through the state and federal government. A lot of this money is going to be for economic development and business revitalization. A lot of these grants um, really offer wonderful programs local businesses can take direct advantage of um, through an entity. But right now, for us to administer those grants, it's uh, paperwork's pretty onerous, and, and making sure that the grants are administered properly is a heavy lift. A bid or an LDC could greatly enhance our ability to access even more funding that can be used for facades or uh, small loans or all kinds of different things. And also, 
it gives us a lot of leverage for public-private partnerships that could be really valuable in activating some of our projects if we're talking about uh, parking structures or things that, that would have a public-private benefit in some context. So that's something we're looking at uh, and we will be going to the coming to the board uh, with our uh, preliminary thoughts on that uh, in the near future. All of this again, obviously environment is key. So as we're looking at um, uh, economic development, we're looking at things that are environmentally sustainable as well, but also facilitate businesses. So again, uh, different modes of transportation, uh, charging stations, um, looking forward to uh, a, a lower carbon footprint. Um, we're also, we also have businesses that they themselves are, are taking this um, as a, a mandate. And we have, we have several businesses that pride themselves on their sustainability efforts, whether it's local sourcing of, of food or other things. But we really, again, Green Austin, has had a huge impact on all of us. So uh, we will make sure that we're green, not only uh, environmentally, economically, we want to be green in a lot of different ways, but mostly for the environment as well. Uh, our COVID-19 response um, was really interesting. Um, we developed so many ways of working with community groups, communicating with community groups over the past year. Um, and I think that those it took what is already a very tightly woven safety net that we have here in Austin and really strengthened it. It really made those bonds uh, between different community groups, uh, school district, um, all of our nonprofits, Open Door, you name it. Um, it. It really brought together how much of a, a village it really takes here. And through that, uh, we worked through some partnerships, I think, and ways of working together and ways of communicating that communicating with each other that really will have long lasting benefits. And I think greatly augment our capacity to serve the community's best interests, but um, really synergistically, a uh, lot of improvements there. So um, there's always a silver lining and certainly with COVID there was, there was that silver lining. And in talking about quality of life, um, you know, we are looking at many different um, policies and initiatives designed to make code enforcement more impactful, um, improve sanitation, uh, ways to really make sure that our community looks and feels and provides a quality of life that we all want to see every day. We know that this is an enormous challenge. Um, we know it's something we can improve upon and it's something we're very focused on. Um, and we'll talk more about that specifically when we get into where we are with our specific projects. Um, Youth Bureau again, we're, we finally got the approval from the county and we'll we, but this is uh, something that the community has asked for for a long time. Uh, we'll be able to greatly um, augment our services for youth in the community. Uh, we're very excited about that, but that ties into economic development too, because a lot of the programs that have talked about are youth leadership, youth mentorship, entrepreneurship, um, and a vibrant local economy means opportunities for youth in all those areas as well. So again, everything stands alone, but we're much greater when we leverage those synergies. For operations and in internal policy, we've got a lot on our plate as well. And again, I mentioned the Indian Brook Water Treatment Plant, uh, which is a, a significant um, undertaking, but one that we need to do. Our current plant was built in 1986. Um, we are already past peak capacity during peak season um, and we need to make sure that we have capacity to provide our community with the water it needs but we also know based on issues we had with water quality taste and odor that we have to have state-of-the-art ability to um, make sure that we're treating our water properly um, and, and staying ahead of things that may be affecting our water sources. For um, our other public facilities, public buildings, we're looking at um, improvements to our community center and 16 Croton Avenue. We know that there are a lot of things that we can be doing um, to make those buildings more effective. And again, the collective impact 
Um, and all of these things in being done in an integrated way really drives effectiveness. And this lays the foundation from which we can build everything else on. Um, so we have improvements that we can make um, at our municipal buildings that will benefit staff and the community. Um, we are looking at community development block grants that will, um, the next round will be focusing on grants that would improve sidewalks, um, accessibility, um, as well as parks and community spaces. Um, and that's uh, going to be probably along the Spring Street corridor, but you know, in, in upgrading our community spaces, we'll be able to have a lot more impact too on uh, quality of life, and taking some of our playgrounds and expanding them um, to touch on things uh, that have to do with uh, environmental sustainable sustainability in terms of materials, but also human sustainability in terms of more dynamic play structures and things to address kids with a wide range of needs and ages. Um, Internal policies, uh, professional services, contracts, and intermunicipal agreements are all something that we're working on. Um, we're really placed everything under systematic review. And as you know, we're doing um, professional services. We're doing uh, RFPs. We have everything on a schedule for a three-year uh, RFP so that we're making sure we're getting the best services at the best price on uh, sustainable infrastructure, is incorporated into all our capital projects, projects and increasingly sustainability is the lens that we look through everything. Um, so again, everything stands alone, but together much stronger. Next slide, please. And really, I think it, it's, it, this is a pretty simple comp concept. Uh, strategic and integrated approach to project management, we know is very important. Uh, the nexus of all of this is greater efficiency, greater impact, um, improved sustainability. But, but more importantly, and I didn't put it here, is um, it also it greatly enhances quality of life for all of us. So as we look through all our projects, and we, do, we are doing a lot right now, um, but we're also building a really, really strong integrated foundation. And, and the idea is that um, as we do these projects, we really take everything that we've heard from the community and try to maximize it and leverage it at every opportunity and doing so with, because we're using community resources. So being as efficient um, as possible with those resources, having the greatest impact is ultimately really the role of what we're doing here in village government. Um, and next, I can take you through the specific status um, of where we are on all our specific project, projects. In planning and development, uh, our comprehensive plan, Austin tomorrow, uh, we have closed the public hearing. Written comments are going to be accepted until uh, April, 20, April um, 20th. And um, we are going to, and we anticipate adopting the plan that the board will adopt the plan on uh, in June sometime. So DPW site development, um, we just completed a, a pretty extensive public engagement series and now we're developing the land acquisition and dis disposition, disposition agreement, the, um, which will be coming forward to the board um, within the next few weeks. Our parking and mobility study, uh, we'll have a presentation at, at the 428 work session. Um, the study is anticipated to be complete by June and we can start looking at implementing the recommendations then um, and developing a plan for that. Uh, we're also excited because we've been, uh, Maddie's done a tremendous amount of work working with the police department and, and others in reviewing our metering systems. So we'll be coming to the board with a rec recommendation for a mobile payment app that will make everybody much happier and that'll be coming in June and, and that's uh, gonna be pretty much ready to be implemented immediately. Our road diet study, uh, stakeholder meetings are gonna be happening towards the end of this month, April 20th and 22nd, um, study completion in June. And we just submitted an implementation grant which would actually help pay for the, the actual milling and paving of the road, striping of the road, um, 
we submitted it through a federal funding stream, uh, community project funding that we were made aware of through Mondaire Jones's office. And we just submitted today uh, a proposal for a million dollars. Um, and we were able, uh, Trustee Casada and I were able to show the Congressman uh, exactly, uh, we stood on the corner of, of Broadway and um, uh, um, Highland Avenue and showed him directly where, what that road diet could possibly do. So hopefully that'll score some points. 200 Main Street, uh, we'll be bringing forth an RFP uh, or we'll be actually coming to the board next week uh, to get approval to go forward with an RFP um, and uh, for the remediation. And that project should be uh, completed by the end of 2021. Youth Bureau, like I said, we are very excited. We are gonna start canvassing for the Director of Youth Services. Um, and we're looking to have a Youth Bureau um, established with a Youth Bureau board in place by the fall of 2021. So once we have the director hired, we'll be able to form the board and really start shaping the um, organization uh, and getting it ready for impact. Um, we are doing the research uh, to identify uh, uh, economic development structure um, and we'll be coming to the board in June with um, some, some thoughts and early recommendations on that. Environmental sustainability, we have, have a lot of things going on under this. Um, our urban forestry grant RFP um, results were received and we're moving forward to uh, purchase our trees, um, which we're very excited to be planting. We're working with Sustainable Westchester. Uh, um, we meet with them weekly. Um, we are promoting the Energy Smart Home Program uh, with the town and uh, the village of Briarcliff. Um, NYSERDA and Con Edison, we're pursuing funding uh, for charging stations for community use um, near the community center, our muni lots, and at Wishney Park. And we are planning an Arbor Day celebration where we'll be planting a tree in uh, Nelson City Park on Arbor Day. With regards to quality of life, we are looking at local laws and new policies and recommendations, all uh, mostly uh, in the area of building um, planning code enforcement. Um, we are also working internally to establish a code enforcement task force, um, which we'll be doing next month. So I'll be able to give you more specifics on that, but that's something um, we're going to be getting members of different departments working on that. And we'll be reaching out to the board as well to have some board liaison participation. Um, we uh, just hired a new code enforcement officer and we are adding Saturday code enforcement uh, schedules. Um, so we're happy about that as well. Um, and for COVID-19, uh, um, we have our memorial planned at Nelson City Park and should have that completed, the memorial actually in place um, by uh, summer, the summer sometime. Um, we're working uh, continuously with community partners to facilitate testing, vaccines, and address other community needs. And um, we have ongoing efforts um, pretty much daily. Uh, things change almost every day, but to ensure resident and staff safety and compliance. And then finally, on the operations and uh, internal policies, um, Indian Brook, uh, Water treatment plant will be bidding uh, this winter. Uh, construction is estimated to be completed in 2024. We've already received $3 million uh, water infrastructure improvement grant that will be um, part of the implementation uh, um, during the construction phase. And we, are, we will be actively pursuing additional grant funding uh, with our uh, regard to our, our capital improvements at the rec center and at 16 Croton Avenue, we've hired Nexus. We should have the first draft of plans uh, next month. Um, for CDBG, uh, as I mentioned, we'll be submitting uh, proposals for the 2022, uh, 20, round um, for sidewalk improvements and playground upgrades. Um, that'll, those are due in July, I believe. And uh, we just submitted a round of uh, specific uh, COVID specific uh, funding uh, requests for 2021. And we've requested uh, an array of um, materials and equipment that we can use to facilitate outdoor dining and outdoor activities, including uh, movies in the park, that type of thing this summer. 
um, operational policies and professional services and IMAs. Um, as you well know, the police reform and reinvention plan was submitted on April 1st. Um, and uh, we will be working with the board on, on following up and implementation and supporting whatever way possible. We are uh, currently putting together recommendations for uh, vehicle procurement expense reimbursement policies, uh, vehicle procurement and expense reimbursement policies. Um, so we will be reviewing that at an upcoming work session, uh, probably by this summer sometime. The Village Seal uh, survey is complete. So onward with the Village Seal and we will be supporting the, the board as best we can in that regard. Um, we have uh, our RFP schedule uh, for this year includes uh, pest training and audit, um, uh, Affordable Care Act compliance and special counsel for litigation as well as uh, police IT. Um, so those are the four that we'll be looking at uh, for RFP reviews this year. Um, and we will be working on a schedule with the board uh, for a review of all of our intermunicipal agreements. Uh, specific to sustainable infrastructure. Um, obviously, this will be a big um, initiative for all of our capital imp improvements. It's something that Nexus is working on. Um, I also want to note that we did get receive a green infrastructure grant um, for the green roof at the water treatment plant, um, but we'll be looking for more funding along that line. We are evolving to a uh, fully electric fleet at some point and um, we're exploring solar on um, municipal buildings. Um, we have three sites included in a, a NIPA RFP um, so moving forward on that as well. And this just to uh, close um, the mayor had asked me to put um, an analysis of our, our staffing by sort of uh, division I guess you would say um, for 2020 and 2021. And I think um, what's important to know is that we are doing a lot, um, but we really have kept our staffing uh, pretty much flat. Um, we are trying to, again, um, as we work, making sure that we're as efficient as possible. We're doing a lot of work um, that involves a team approach, um, which was, is a little bit different than things that we were done in the past, but where we have um, project leads from different um, departments collaborating so that we can move more quickly and make sure that we have all the expertise and, and technical resources available to us to be effective. Um, and uh, I think the other thing that's important to note that uh, we also are managing um, expenses to revenue. So during 2020, we did not run camp and a lot of things that require our temporary uh, part-time um, seasonal staff. Um, and that enabled us to, uh, you know, keep ourselves in, in, in good fiscal shape. Uh, we do anticipate running those programs this year, but I think that uh, in the next presentation, uh, Dale will be able to take you through where we are with the budget and what our projections are for 2020. 2021, I'm sorry. Are we going right into budgets or do um, we take a little, so how do you want to do it? It's your presentation. You can ask questions now about any of the projects and then we can go into budgets or we can just go straight through and you can ask questions. However, we're, we're open, we're flexible. Me, uh, I would prefer if I could ask questions on this one. So, cause budget is a little bit different and there is another presentation, which is a little bit different. So I would prefer, me personally, I would prefer to ask some questions now if I could. Okay, I'm neutral on it, so I'm fine. It seems like a natural um, spot. I, I wanna just kick it off. First of all, thank you for putting this all together. I'm exhausted listening to it. I can only imagine what it's like working on all this stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's really great. Uh, Karen, what you and your staff have put together, I appreciate to put it in context. Um, I spoke to a village manager a while ago and maybe it's my corporate background, I don't know, but I happen to like quarterly reviews. Um, this is not the same um, layout that I'd expected because last time we talked about projects, you had a different sort of setup. But I'm loving the fact that each time we see it, 
Um, there's a different context. Um, you're putting the presentations together a little bit differently. Obviously, somebody on staff is a huge fan of Prezi and things like that. So it makes it, I think, easier to understand. So I, I really appreciate all the work that went into pulling together so many diverse projects done by so many different people. Um, and, and then pulling it all together and we'll pull it together with budgets. Um, I hope that like in the next quarter, when you do the review though, that you keep it um, at least in 2021 in the similar format. Obviously we will not take as much time in the first part. We'll simply say people go back and look at it, but I, I love the context. It's our first quarter of 2021. Um, so I appreciate that. And I'm gonna tell you, I may for the first time, and you may never hear this from me again, I don't actually have any real questions. They may come up, but um, you did a, uh, such a good job of laying it out. Not exactly the way I would have laid it out, not exactly the focus, but it doesn't matter how I would have done it. I'm not the village manager. You're the village manager and all of your people put it together and it really tells a story. And I very much appreciate not only the story, but the number of, I was trying to keep track of all the initiatives, including some of things that I've not seen before. So I appreciate that. I do think it's important to have a staff. I'd like that to stay in. And I think it should become a part of Dale's conversations as well. So people know um, the staff, where we are year to date and where we are year over year, because, um, People have very different views of civil servants and what the municipality has. And I think seeing the numbers tells the story. So that was just a context. Um, and I expect to have this done every quarter going forward. And I think um, that will be super helpful. So opening it up to trustees, Manny's picture is actually front and center in my gallery because he started talking. So his picture is the biggest one in my gallery on Zoom. Um, so the biggest picture gets to go first. Manny, you're on. Hey, thanks, uh, Mayor. I appreciate that. So no, I appreciate this, Karen, and, and I'm sure Maddie was, and Jamie was uh, probably involved in all these other stuff. So this is uh, very helpful. Obviously a little bit different from what it was sent to us uh, before. So I was trying I, to keep track. Yeah, I did make, um, we did make some edits along the way. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah. missing some of the slides, obviously. Yeah, so I'll, 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 get you the, I'll get you That's, the final version. That'll be great. Um, so I'm going to go like an overall. Sure, there's a lot of projects. Some of them, they're integrated within each other. I'm, 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 I cannot wait to go over at some point the code enforcement stuff. Um, I'm hoping, and I'm going to cross my fingers, it's the same stuff that um, I've been hoping to talk and to bring in front of the board for, I want to say, two years now uh, with the help of Stuart. Yep. So I'm hoping that comes in front of us soon. I hope that that's, um, again, I'm hoping that's what it is. Uh, you know, point of clarification and some of the stuff, like uh, I'm going to take that phrase out of uh, Christy Fritchie. Um, you know, I'm glad that actually we're going to have a code enforcement that works on the weekends. Uh, that's not something new. Uh, that's all something that we had in the past uh, and never was uh, replaced, I want to say, or never never someone took over from, from that portion of it. So I'm glad to see that that is happening now. Uh, and Karen and, and, and I had discussions and I had different ideas and different concepts and, and how that should be taking place because obviously Saturday could be a busy day. Uh, it should not be an easy day. It should be a very busy and proactive day for whoever... Uh, is going to be working on that Saturday. Um, and, and I'm going to go a little bit of topic, uh, and, and I'm going to go back to the last slide that you, that you brought up with employees, how many employees do we have, 2020, 2021. So my question on that one is, is that unfilled positions as well? Is that part of those, those numbers? So, can, so in 2020, you had... Um, can you go bring that up? I don't want to say that. I know the last digits was yep, 100. Give me just one second. I'm, I'm doing that right now. Give me one moment. The first number was 115 on 2020, and the second number was 113 in 2021. So I was just curious to know that there was, those were, I'm assuming there were, I believe, retirements uh, that happened last year, correct? So there, yeah, so um, there were some retirements last year that we didn't fill, um, but there were uh, four uh, full-time vacancies last year, so there's five this year, 
So it, it sort of, and then we had one full-time person go to part-time in 2021. So, so, and, and so to me, in reality is that even though we have those positions uh, and, and the full-time, sure, because um, I know in the building department, we had at least two vacants. We had, we had the allocation money for, and a budget, but they were really not there. As, as a physical person was not there, a body was not filling those chairs. Same thing for, for Dell, sure, on the, on the finance yeah. department, there's someone missing, but that right. missing person is part of the count. Well, we, we, we incorporated any vacancies in the, in the, so we broke it out. So if the, and, and there's like the, actually in, the, in this broke out, broken out, we, we broke it out for um, first quarter. So in the five vacancies, it's um, two, the, the code enforcement, the building inspector, the code enforcement we've subsequently filled, uh, finance, and, and the, youth, um, bureau the staff. youth bureau staff. So, I, so to me, at least to me, to make it clear, I, I would have put a, an additional column where, or at least put in parentheses, unfilled positions, but they're part of the count. Yeah, be well, what I did, so yeah, what I did here is the vacancies are the unfilled position. Okay. Yeah. But that's, uh, okay, all right. Yeah, that's, that makes sense, I guess, in a way, for me now, that I guess. Um, <laughs> we, we, no, we that's, that's fine. I mean, but now, for, for 2021, is that the expectation for the, for the camp right now? Yeah, so that's, um, you know, um, generally speaking, we have around 30 uh, part-time people that are, are, you know, pretty much year-round. And then, in, you know, then it, it jumps up by over 100 when we do summer programs and camps. But that has, has that been finalized, I guess? Yeah, we're running forward with camp programs, so we will be hiring okay. those positions. Okay. I mean, overall, I, I cannot wait for a lot of this stuff. I, I am going to ask you something, though, and probably um, I missed this in, uh, when, when this was um, presented to us. Could you send me whatever information that you have on 200 Main Street in the grant that we received? I would like to hear the specifics on the state and requirements of that one. I know you said that there's some regulations in there that, you know, if we use yep. the money that was part of the grant, the regulations, I just want to, I, I, yep. for me, yep. for my I own. Will, we'll send you that. Okay. Overall, no great problem. presentation. Thank you. I like the graphics too. So awesome Thank job. you. Thank you. I can go next. Uh, thank you, Karen. Great presentation. I agree. Uh, a lot of great stuff happening. My uh, Most of the stuff that you brought up, we've discussed in one form or fashion in the past. Uh, the only uh, topic that was named in there that I, I haven't seen a ton of detail on is around sidewalk repair. And the reason that I ask is because I know that there's a lot of attention and it's uh, well placed on road repair and people asking, when are you fixing the roads? But I don't see as much attention on when are you fixing the sidewalks? And my sense is that it's either sidewalks that people call in and identify, hey, here's a problem. And we're kind of spot fixing them. But I don't know if there's a schedule that we have of going through the village and over X amount of time replacing the sidewalk. The big, big reason that I ask is because um, on my block where I live, there are a bunch of old trees. And this is not unique to my block, but this is like an example. It's a bunch of old trees. And I love these old trees. They're beautiful. But also they have these huge roots that cause the sidewalk to jut up and crack and break and do all these wacky things. Now, people can walk it. It's fine. Uh, but over time, it becomes harder and harder to navigate, particularly for folks with mobility issues, much less if you have a wheelchair or anything like that. So can you talk to me a little bit about what sidewalk repair looks like? So, um, yeah, so first I want to clarify for, you know, what I didn't go into is like the, you know, the annual uh, paving that, that comes out of DPW that's really sort of the day-to-day the -day works of the village. Um, this really was specific to grants because the community development block grants will pay for um, the, they, they, the sidewalk infrastructure, the accessibility that goes with that, um, that's, 
that's a good project that we we can get funding for so it um but you know paul and i have talked about this because it's not your, just your neighborhood it's a big issue and, and we're kind of concerned because it's a big issue in sparta too uh which is a historic district so you have these gorgeous old trees and they are completely destroying like the sidewalk it, it is a hazard so um we do have a schedule um you know and that's something that that um paul can be presenting and i think it's something that we can look towards too um of, of where we want to go as especially as we get ready for the next budget season is is making sure we're amplifying um what we're getting through grant funding and that definitely is on paul's radar so um you know, when we did um, the the aqueduct, the Dewar Circle and aqueduct, at the, we did the sidewalks and paving at the same time. And the sidewalks were all, all the curb cuts were done. They were, the ADA accessibility was upgraded. Um, so that's usually what we do. I think on, you know, the streets with the trees and stuff, it like, it may mean trees come down. It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be a, a difficult decision going to have to be made there but we definitely have that situation in a, in a few places in the village so it is something that's on paul's radar that we're going to have to figure out how we're going to address thank you karen can i just say just one thing trustee lopez under our charter the property owner will be assessed the cost of those repairs and uh, and so that's done we just got a notice that we're doing it on one particular location they get assessed uh, they have the ability, if they want you to hire their own contractor to make the repairs. If not, we'll do it. But if we do it, they do have to pay for it. And if they don't pay for it, it goes on their tax bill. That's helpful. Thank you, Stuart. Okay, so um, it, it, are there any more questions? I'd just like to say thank you so much, Karen and crew for putting this together. It's always good to get, you know, kind of the view from 30,000 feet of everything that's going on and to get the big picture. And there's a lot of exciting stuff happening and I'm sure that things will pop up. Um, but uh, um, I don't have any questions, but just, uh, excited to uh, move forward on these things. So thanks. Thank you. Anybody All right. else? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hey, um, yes, we can. Just my lost my video. Sorry. All right. So are we ready for um, the, the budget portion of our program? Looks like we are. So hit it, Dale. All right. And we, have, you, we have Liz too here. I just want to yep. point it out. Our deputy treasurer is here too, Liz McCarry. Mm -mm. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Manager DeTori. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Village Board. Um, thank you for the opportunity this evening uh, for Deputy Treasurer Elizabeth Nakari and I to review the 2020 year end for the Village Finances. Um, and also to review at a very high level at this point, uh, 2021 projections. Um, in regards to 2021, um, we anticipate coming back to the board um, in the next month or so with a much more in-depth analysis. Um, and especially with uh, there being a lag uh, in time, like right now we really just finished getting all the accounts payable done and all the revenues in uh, for our 2021 year. Uh, so with that lag of time, uh, the next uh, month or, or six weeks or so will give us a better uh, view in, in detail view of 2021. Uh, so Maddie's going to be uh, my slider person. Thank you very much. So the first slide, um, I'm going to start basically at the end <laughs> with this presentation. Um, these numbers are pre-audit. We are still booking a few items, uh, not material and value essentially at this point, um, but these numbers are gonna change uh, relatively slightly um, and actually 
uh, in the village's favor as we're liquidating um, prior year encumbrances uh, that do not need to be on our books. Uh, so essentially in actual values, in terms of revenues actually received, we received 37 million 62,221. And in terms of actual expenditures, we had 35 million 74,707. So essentially it's your revenues minus your expenses equals what then goes back to fund balance or is taken. And so since our revenues are higher than our expenses, we are going to add to fund balance at the end of 2020, one million nine hundred eighty-seven dollars uh, five hundred and fourteen. But how did we get there? So if we go to the next slide uh, for this purpose, um, I did not include uh, fund balance in either uh, the revenue side of the ledger or the expense side of the ledger, just to make it easier to see uh, where our actual numbers were coming from. Uh, so for budgeted revenues, uh, less fund balance, it's 36,890,367. For actual revenues received, we received 37,000, 37,062,221. So our revenues that were received over budget, which is part of what gets added back to fund balance, is 171,854. So if we go to the next slide, this is a snapshot of where um, the changes, the major changes are. So essentially the green items are amounts that came in at a good percentage over our budgeted amounts and the pink uh, shaded items are items that came in uh, you know, at a higher percent under budget. And at the bottom, you can see the modified budget, the final actual, and then the excess or the deficit. It is in an excess position, and there's your 171,854. So if we can go to the next slide. We asking questions at the end or as we go along? What works best for you, Dale? Uh, I can do it any way you would like. What would you prefer? Um, you can ask as we're there. That might be easier. Okay. Uh, could you go back? Sure. Maddie, Maddie I think, is doing it. <laughs> yes. Thank um, you, I never know what miscellaneous is. I'm not going to make you go through it. So basically, you came really close on real property taxes. That's yes, pretty good estimate and pretty good reality. Yeah. And that's and, the big number. So and, thank you and, for that. And part of that was... Um, at the end of the year, we have to take into account any uncollected taxes as of 1231. Um, we then are afforded uh, the next uh, 60 days of collections to go against our open balance uh, from 1231. Um, and at that point, at the end of February, we have to make an entry to our books for uh, an allowance of uncollected taxes. So we basically have to hold um, you know, in, in, in fund balance and amount backwards to fund those uncollected taxes. And at the, at the end of the year, we only had to make an adjustment uh, of, I believe it was $18,000, um, reducing our, our real property tax revenue. And then the other portion that reduces our real property tax revenue is any tax or refunds that were attributable to the 2020 year itself. Okay, and the other big change is fines and forfeitures. Just remind me what that is. That is our uh, justice court revenues. Okay, so that I'm assuming with the red, it's COVID related since nobody was collecting anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yep. so, yep. and this is a tiny nothing amount so it's just a curiosity uh -huh. is what is federal aid 4,000 and the actual is zero. Uh, what federal, is that? uh, th that's a, a federal aid uh, grant, um, which I'm still trying to make sure we're not getting funds on. So I've been in touch with uh, Patty over at the police 
So that okay. might be a value that changes. Uh, we we are still in process with that. Okay. I was just curious what that meant. So it's right. really the amount of course is, is a is right thing in the scheme of things. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. Does anybody else have questions for that slide while we're there or? Uh, yeah, if you can go back to that one. Thank you, Dale. Uh, sure. Hi, Liz. It's always nice to see you guys here. Um, the last one, the interphone transfer. Um, can you go into the details on that one? Exactly what that means? Sure. Um, the interfund transfer amount is actually an amount that came over to the general fund uh, back in, I believe we did the resolution end of May or beginning of June uh, to close uh, a bunch of older capital projects that were no longer active. At that point, uh, 133000 uh, went back to uh, the general fund because if a project is funded by the general fund or the water fund or the sewer fund, you can then transfer the funds back appropriately to the fund. If that project was funded from a borrow, so a serial bond, uh, we then have to transfer the excess balance of a project funded by a serial bond over to debt service. And then you are allowed to use uh, the reserves from the debt service to pay down the bond uh, in the coming years. Okay. So we had a portion of both going on when we did that resolution. Yeah, now, now I remember that. Thank you. Um, sure. Obviously, and the fines and forfeitures, I, I'm hoping to maybe this year or next year, we actually get to see some of that money uh, that was put in on the budget, 2020 budget. Maybe we can see an increase that at some point. So but that's just a hope. I don't have any right. questions on this one. But thank you, Bill. I, thank you. I have I have your hope too as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next um, the next slide then, if we're good. So uh, here is a, a highlight of some of the bigger items that did come in um, under budget. Unfortunately. Um, and a lot of these um, we had recognized uh, back in, oh, it was almost a year ago now, um, when we went to the board, uh, when the beginning days of COVID and the board was very responsive and wanted to make sure we had these dis different scenarios in play so that we, we could guide ourselves, right? We could, we could determine or try to at least determine what might happen. Um, and some of it did, unfortunately, and, and we are looking at that uh, right now. Uh, so our prisoner transportation, um, where we had budgeted 34,000 in revenue, uh, we did only receive 7,500. Uh, our parking revenues uh, were down, not so much for uh, the train station, um, although that will be a discussion item in a future slide uh, for 2021, uh, but for the Muni lot parking, uh, because there was a period of time that uh, they were not um, doing the permits. So there's like a, basically a lag in that situation and they were not ticketing, which then goes hand in hand also with the last line of justice court fines. Uh, as well as with the justice court fines, the court was physically closed as well. So that compounded uh, that, that revenue loss. Uh, and the parking meters uh, as well um, had, had a lag due to COVID. And then of course, our recreation programs. Um, so as you can see, uh, we really um, were not able to do much uh, in terms of programming. Uh, they definitely did as much as, you know, allowed and they could. Um, so we did uh, see some revenue. So of the 904300 for recreation revenues, we received 274900 showing a loss. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little more in a further slide um, when we look at the recreation uh, expenditures that are also then under budget. Are there any questions on this slide? Um, I have, um, so these are basically COVID related losses. Uh, yes. 
And yet, despite these losses, we came out almost $2 million ahead. Yes. Good. Well, but you carry over some stuff. It's not. Yeah. Right. So what is prisoner transportation and why is that our, why do we, are we involved in prisoner transportation? Uh, we have um, a contract with the county to transport um, the prisoners when they are coming to court. Um, so it's, it's in regards to that, that contract. So part of that actually might also be in effect uh, due to uh, the bail reform as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not quite sure how much, you know, is COVID versus, um, you know, the, the bail reform. I imagine pretty much everybody has COVID related losses, every municipality, right? Oh, absolutely. So yes. Good question. <laughs> we yes. are not alone. <laughs> no, no. And we, the village of Austin was actually one of 20 entities uh, that the Office of the State Controller um, did an analysis of um, for the, the 2021 uh, COVID budget is what they were basically calling it, the COVID, you know, to, to see how we handled um, our budgeting for 2021. Uh, and we received um, uh, as positive as, as the state controller would give, um, you know, uh, basically uh, you did fine, you know, no opinion, um, which is great, so. Thank you, Dale. Um Quick question for you. So the last one that uh, Justin Courts finds, is that the same as the previous page that finds in forfeitures as well? Yes. All right, because the amounts are a little bit, at least I'm, I'm looking at the spreadsheet that I have here or the presentation that I have here and the amounts are different. Not that by much, not that right. it doesn't mean anything, but you know, right. um, I was just curious if it's a, you know, it's because, a well, the, yep, yep, because in, in justice, uh, fines and forfeitures as as a as a function. Uh, we also have a budget item for um, uh, uh, deposits, gotcha. so that yeah, and we can take those in as revenue. Okay. Uh, for for uh, yeah yeah for bail. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Okay. If no one has any questions, we'll get to a better slide for revenues. <laughs> so this slide uh, depicts where we came in actually over budget. Um, so sales tax revenue where we had budgeted for uh, 0.5 million, uh, we came in at 5,194,700, which is 635,100 over our budget amount. Uh, dumpster and green waste fees uh, came in a little bit higher. Part of this is due to um, the green waste uh, portion is uh, an IMA with the town and with the tropical storm that came through, um, those bills were higher. Uh, and uh, DPW has added uh, three more uh, dumpster accounts uh, to their roles. So that's increasing the revenue uh, for that line. Individual property rent uh, went up. We budgeted 136,600. Uh, actual revenue came in at 182,700. Um, part of this is attributable to uh, the license agreement with the Bigfoot Creamery down at the Henry Gordon Park. Uh, and then an additional uh, license agreement uh, for uh, Westerly Road uh, that started in 2020. Uh, the next line is building permits, uh, where we had budgeted 150,000. They came at came in at 232,100, and uh, I had asked Joe for. Uh, a list which I can't find, but he did have <laughs> a couple of higher uh, higher building permits uh, in 2020. Uh, one of them was for 32 State Street. 
another higher one was 173 North Highland and 175 North Highland um, and uh, 70A Croton Avenue. Um, and when we get to 2021, uh, I neglected to add, unfortunately, the, the current year's building permits uh, increase on there, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, sale of surplus, we do not budget for one-off uh, items, so we, we essentially budget zero, but sale of surplus is when uh, we approve, uh, send a resolution to the board to approve uh, some of our older equipment or vehicles um, to be designated as surplus. Uh, we can then uh, auction them uh, and receive the funds, and that is uh, what happened uh, in 2020, we received 102,700. Um, I know there were various um, cars and pieces of equipment, but there were also two um, older, older fire trucks. Health insurance stop loss, um, even though it shows as a revenue, there really is an offsetting expense. Um, especially in years where uh, our health uh, costs exceed budget, which we will see uh, on one of the slides further on. Um, but stop loss is basically, uh, we have uh, a limit that we pay up to for uh, an individual in terms of uh, health um, expenses. And then at that point, an excess policy comes into play and uh, that's where these reimbursements are generated from. The next line is mortgage tax, uh, which as you can see, uh, we budgeted 180,000. It came in at 264,800, um, which was basically uh, 100 and, like 147%, so that's great. Uh, as you uh, probably have seen, I don't know, in your neighborhoods or talk around town that, you know, houses are selling very, very quickly. Uh, we have tons of calls for final water readings for people, um, you know, that are, that are moving uh, out. So it's very active right now. So, and it's still active. So I expect that number to, uh, stay pretty uh, much the same for 2021. And interfund transfers, this is what um, Manuel had asked before that we spoke about. Uh, so this is the debt service, uh, the capital closed capital projects coming over uh, for the general fund portion as a revenue. Does anyone have questions on that slide or we're okay? We're good. We can keep going. I, I, actually, I do. Oh. Sorry, man. Uh, so the expectations of the sales tax is that we knew that they were going to be higher. We have that expectation. Um, because of what's been happening, do you think that is going to continue in the 2021 budget portion of that based on any conversations that you had with the county? Uh, I, I do have an analysis in as we get further into the slides uh, for the 2021 uh, amount. Um, and essentially, you know, I, I, I try to be very conservative um, because I, I, I don't, I, I like to be happily surprised versus <laughs> not happily surprised, <laughs> let's oh, say. <laughs> let's say. Yeah. So, and especially with sales tax, because essentially when we budgeted for 2020, um, back in, you know, the end of 2019, yeah. this is pre anything, yeah. um, you know, and we were very conservative because that was essentially. Um, when the, the additional 1% uh, for sales tax was coming, but we had no actual facts to base it on. Um, so even though they would give us, they gave us a projection, um, you know, of uh, almost, it was almost 1.4 million, I believe, in additional sales tax uh, revenue that we were supposed to receive. Um, we only, 
budgeted half of it um, mm -hmm. for 2020, and we were lucky, um, you know, because if we had budgeted the whole thing, we wouldn't be looking at this as a as a positive. Correct. We'd we'd be looking at it as a negative. As a negative. Um, so. So uh, that's, that's that was, what I, yeah, that's what I want to emphasize to the rest of the board that this is the reasons why we've seen high numbers is because high conservative are you know Dale and Tom were in the past obviously and, and had to look at this um, and also the building department uh, and the building permit you know you you kind of touch a little bit you know we were inspecting a building permit which came out you know mm -hmm. that was that so now that. Phase, it reduces in a way a little bit of the 2021, but that's, we'll, we'll look at it when we get to that point. But no, thank you. Thank, thanks for this one. Okay, great. Hey, Dale. Yes. I know that um, how much we love going through every single line item and um, there are endless number of questions. However, if I may suggest that we move um, slide by slide, not line item by line item, and sure. people can ask if they have a line item question, either for clarification. Uh, I'm just looking at the time, and yes, I do okay. appreciate and recognize, um, you know, that I talked yep. a lot about towing, but it was an issue that mattered to me, so I apologize, but. Um, that's, that's fine by me, absolutely. Uh, so essentially, the next slide gets us into the expenditure side of the ledger. Um, and as you can see, this is where the other portion of uh, that $1.9 million that's being shown in fund balance uh, is housed. It's from uh, expenditures being under budget. Uh, so the next slide uh, is going to show areas where uh, we were over budget in expenditure lines. Uh, for which uh, you you have seen them, uh, I believe, on the memo I provided, uh, because we do have to uh, do some housekeeping to clean up over budget items so that the auditors uh, uh, do not have a negative amount in any uh, point one, uh, two, or four line item. Uh, so, if anybody has questions on this slide. I just have one comment, not a question, and I guess at some point I, I want to go back to something that I brought up a couple of weeks back. Um, it is the, uh, the tax charity claims. There's a big difference of eighty thousand dollars. Sure, we. I know I said this before, but I think we have to look at this and we have to have a conversation with Fernando at some point. We we need to at least I would like to understand this better because we reduced the amount a couple of years back when the town did the assess value on all the properties. And now we are seeing an increase on, on this and it's not a small increase, it's a big increase, it's $80,000. So I wanna make sure that we are aware of what, where the assessor's office is going with this. And if we need to up our budget to meet this number, that's what we have to do. But I think we need to have a conversation with, with Fernando itself and kind of to better understand. That's right. the problem that I have. Right, well, um, just just as a notation, um, I know we did speak about it, I, I believe in, in March, um, but in terms of uh, the budget end of it, I did increase the budget uh, for 2021 uh, up to 97,000 for this line, and that was uh, based on Fernando's um, projections. Um, but sometimes, you know, things come in sooner than, than planned in terms of settlement, or they're settled higher than anticipated. And that's, unfortunately, those are the unknowns, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we do try and, and we do have a, a methodology to budget, yeah. um, unfortunately. True. Uh, I, I know we went over True. this um, yeah, after that. So the last yeah, one I yeah. have, and, and if you guys have an answer, if not, you can always email me on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the planning consultant service, $48,000 over different. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. Karen, Dale, you can send me an email on this one. Um, I would like to just to get a, a little bit better clarification on this. I, I want to make sure that what, what was that we missed, I guess. That was um, that was where we um, 
we had increased the contract when we were um, absent, you know, down a planner. Um, but that's since been rectified, so you won't see that. Um, hold on. Not, yeah. Right. So that, that was, yes. But hold on a second. We hire a planner on March, so between January and March, I want to say, that's $48,000. What was forty eight thousand dollars? And it was. I'd have to go back and look at everything it, else too. There may have been other stuff too. Right, and it was actually that was part um, of the the wetlands. Um, that's but, there right. Were, but you're right, and and so the the retainer amount changed um, in October and and was reduced at that point, but also contained in that forty eight thousand overage. Um, is the RFP for the Water Street property was charged there uh, for ten thousand? Okay. Yeah, so that's all. Me, that's yeah, also just send me that just for yeah, just for my own clarification. If you don't mind, tomorrow mm -hmm. or next week, that's fine. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Any uh, anybody have any questions on that? We're good with that one. So essentially the next slides, each one uh, is um, a department uh, with a blurb uh, explaining uh, generally why we were under budget. I don't think, I think these are all under budgets. Yep, yep. So the finance department was under by 46,000. Uh, we're showing uh, four years of comparison from budget uh, to actual uh, expenses at your end. Uh, for informational purposes. Uh, the next slide is uh, the I want to do a personal footnote. Thank you, because I know that since I've been a trustee, <laughs> I've asked for a minimum of three-year trend analysis. Mm -hmm. um, I thank We're, you for doing this. I, I oh, it, it does not go unnoticed, so thank you. Uh, oh, no, my, my pleasure. And it's, and it's going to get better, because we actually, um, I had about 20 minutes of training on a new pilot dashboard. Uh, that is part of uh, the admins product, uh, product and um, it will give uh, all sorts of graphs and information and, you know, a great dashboard, which uh, great. We're, work we're working with and uh, hopefully we can show you one day. So, Thank you. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Uh, so the next slide is uh, the police department, um, who was also uh, under budget. Um, the next slide is the building department, uh, and essentially um, these departments were, were under their budgeted amounts uh, for unfilled uh, positions. The next slide is the Department of Public Works, uh, also under budget. Uh, basically, um, what saved us there was uh, snow. Uh, <laughs> I'm not so sure that's going to happen <laughs> for 2021. Um, although I did look, our, our expenses um, are still uh, under, um, you know, the, the budget amount right now, as long as we don't have an April storm. And I probably just uh, jinxed us jinxed all. Jinxed it. <laughs> just jinxed it. We'll have a, we'll have a blizzard. We'll have a blizzard tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> so I'm hoping that that we're okay, but we might not see too much of a savings uh, in 2021 for our snow. Uh, the next slide um, is parks and recreation. So this is uh, essentially where I was I was going to when we were talking about uh, the revenue side of the ledger. Um, so while we had a net revenue loss of 586,000, um, we had uh, unexpended amounts of 869,000. Um, so we, we basically um, were okay, even though you know, we, we didn't bring in those revenues, um, we also did not bring in those expenses. Uh, so that's why um, you know, we didn't have uh, too much of a fiscal uh, issue in, in having that huge revenue loss. Uh, the next slide is the planning department. Uh, they are also under budget uh, for some contractual items. Uh, the next slide uh, is employee benefits. And since we had uh, 
unfilled positions. We also had reduced costs. So you have reduced costs for retirement, uh, FICA, Medicare, uh, MTA tax, uh, and also our uh, workers' comp expenses um, were much lower than anticipated. Uh, so reducing um, uh, our expenses, gain, well, gaining 1.073, uh, an unexpended amount for creating our next slide, which is the fund balance slide. Uh, we will not go into this slide. <laughs> the, the major item to see is down on the bottom that's highlighted in blue. So where we started, uh, ended 2019, uh, started 2020 at 14214225 for our unassigned fund balance. So that's our that's our savings account, right? For our rainy day fund. Uh, we will essentially uh, increase it up to 15,990,618. Although that number is gonna go a little higher with some of the changes uh, we're making. Um, this includes, if you look on the second line down where it says restricted peg funds reserves, uh, just an item to note for that amount, uh, 305,000 uh, is in reserve for our PEG funds. So that can be used towards uh, capital equipment costs uh, for um, broadcasting uh, and all that good stuff. All right. So the water fund is in a similar position our revenues uh, for actual revenues came in at 11,760,865 and our expenses came in at 9,891,588. Uh, so that's an increase of 1.8 million to the fund balance. The next slide is sewer. <clears throat> so revenues again, minus uh, expenses, an addition of 285,000. Uh, So uh, the next couple slides we'll touch on um, just briefly 2021. Um, so being conservative in projecting out sales tax um, in respect to what I've seen so far for January and February, where there was a reduction from the prior year, even though um, those prior year amounts were uh, pre-COVID, um, um, being conservative and saying, uh, we will receive 454000 over our budgeted amount uh, for 2021. Station parking is definitely lagging. Uh, I know the clerk has um, opened up uh, the waiting list. I have seen some activity, um, but I'm being conservative in anticipating uh, potentially another 25000 uh, in revenues, giving us a potential budget gap of 120,000. Uh, On the plus side, though, we uh, have submitted 95,000 in reimbursement for COVID uh, costs that will come in uh, if if they are granted in 2021 as revenue um, for Tropical Storm Isaiah's. Uh, we're still working uh, on submitting stuff. We've su we submitted a couple of um, pieces of the, the, the reimbursement, uh, still working on the rest, but they total to 269,000 uh, in reimbursement. And then of course, the American Rescue Plan, uh, we're waiting uh, A on final allocation numbers uh, for the village, um, as well as additional guidance um, from the Department of Treasury that's supposed to be uh, giving out more guidance on, on use, eligible use. So on this is uh, the expenditure side. So at, as, of, as of this date right now and this cost savings, is through this week's payroll, so it's true. Cost savings, we have four open positions in the police department, 
two for the Youth Bureau, uh, one for finance, and then two for building. So to date, we have a budget savings of 211000 in expenses. Um, where do we see a concern is a special counsel, special counsel uh, for Labor Council, which is budgeted at 50000 uh, but we're projecting 150. Um, what we do want to bring up, though, is uh, the summer uh, intern program, uh, where we currently have uh, six positions um, that have been brought forward for interns, um, but only two are physically budgeted at this point. Uh, so we would like to submit <clears throat> a budget adjustment uh, for the next meeting to cover those. So, oh, I'm sorry, Mayor, go ahead. No, I, I just want to say a couple of things. Just tell me if I'm, let's make sure that I have this right. The police department has had four openings on and off for a number of years now, correct? Uh, it varies between two, three. Uh, okay. Four, this, this is the highest. The highest, that but I've, it's generally that not I've a couple. Seen. We budget and they usually have yes. the youth bureau yeah. is, an, is non-existent really yet. So right. they're open position because we budgeted for them, which was a good mm -hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to. But the reality is we're a quarter, we're one quarter into the year. We don't have one yet. And we just saw a presentation by the village manager that it's most likely a little bit. It's on the way, but there'll be adjustments. Uh -huh. that's good. Um, it's basically a lot of the savings it has to do with personnel. You not only save when you have an opening on the personnel, but you also save on all the accrued, all the other pieces that an individual gets with their salary, which is the benefits and retirement, all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's why there's a multiplier effect. So we get that special counsel for, um, we have to go back and sort of, um, look at that i have no doubt in my mind for the next three to five years will there will be more um you know we're, we're getting to be a bigger community and i think that we're just going to have uh litigation as part of a municipality um the intern program i just want to be reminded did we budget what are the six positions if you could just give me an idea of what they are um, and I'm uh, assuming the budget yeah. is what, like minimum wage kind of for everybody? What, what's the... Gail, do you want me to grab that one? Uh, grab sure. Away, Maddie. Go ahead, sure. Maddie. Um, thank so, you. Thank you. Um, the two positions that were uh, included in the 2021 budget include uh, one intern for uh, the water department and sort of uh, catch-all engineering. So that okay. was budgeted for. Um, and then there was also uh, money budgeted for seasonal help in the building department. So from what I understand, typically each summer they have uh, either one or two persons come in and help them with records retention, scanning, um, you know, organizing. Um, so those were the two that were budgeted. Uh, in addition, um, Paula in personnel has requested um, a part-time intern. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, these are, these are all minimum wage or very close to. Um, uh, the village manager's office has requested also a part-time intern um, to get us up to speed on the climate smart communities and clean energy communities applications that we've been speaking about for some time. Uh, basically uh, doing all the paperwork associated with all the good work that's already been done. Um, and then we also had a request from Jaime Martinez um, to have a planning uh, intern in, in his office. Um, so that that's all of them. So, so the three, um, Hold on one second. I think that's all of them. Karen, did I miss one? I got to check my email. Did you um, no. talk about uh, uh, water? Yeah. yeah okay. So, so I'm sorry. Engineer, one in engineering, yeah. two in building. So that's three. Okay. Um, yeah. And then one in manager, one in planning, one in personnel. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to, um, if I may at this point, suggest that you add a position. Um, communications seems to. Um, getting it's like law it's becoming bigger and bigger it came out in the police reform um updating website helping jamie with it i think that's a great intern opportunity i'd like to make that seven positions if i get the board support because i'm very much in favor of interns i think it's great for number one um employing um folks in our community um is a good thing um certainly uh, post-pandemic two 
I would really like more and more people, and I'm not saying young people, because I assume this is not just like students, that when we talk about interns, it's open to beyond just um, kids, that it's open to people in general, um, and that it's advertised um, appropriately. But um, I would love to get more people to learn more about government and opportunities in government as careers. So I see only upsides to this and at these salaries, um, as far as employing people locally, um, given um, so many other things that we have going on, I would be supportive of actually um, increasing it by one and, and be very supportive as long as you guys can really start advertising these positions and interview and give access to as many um, folks as you can. That would be fantastic. That's my uh, personal uh, point of view. Um, um, very much in support of that. And I know that this was added a little bit late, uh, but um, thank you for doing that. Does anybody else have sure. any questions or comments? I, I do. Thank you, Mayor. And actually, you, you went through some of the questions that I had. And obviously, the last one you hit. And, um, I, I understand. Thanks, Maddie, for that clarification. I'm actually I'm a little bit on, on the opposite side. I'm not in support of adding uh, any additional positions that we already not part, were part of the budget. Um, you know, if we want to discuss this for next year and see how it goes, I, I'm open to that. At this point, I would, and I know it's not much. It's not about the money. It, to me, it's about the concept and what those positions are bringing to the board or to the to the community. Because we're not sure if this actually is going to go to the community. We can we can advertise it, but an internship is an internship. Anybody from the county or any you know from Jersey can come in and do an internship. I'm not um, I'm not opposed to having this but not this year. I would prefer to table this and have a conversation, a deeper conversation um, for next budget for next year now. But I could be alone on that one. Uh, I, I don't know, but that's, that's where my head is right now. Thank I'll you, Manny. Next. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll go next. So uh, I'm in favor of adding the four. Um, I defer to uh, uh, Karen and the team about the seventh um the communications oh. I, I i can see the the rationale but i i defer to them a, as they review their needs and determine what makes the most sense but i i would be in favor of the four thank you um omar i meant to say it's i didn't mean seven i meant it's two were budgeted additionally four equals six so i just meant to say the additional um one person by the way one more. but thanks right. i think everybody understood that but i just wanted to yeah. clarify yep dana and bob please if you have something to chime in with if not that's okay i'll go with the four okay uh, again i i'll leave it up to you know i mean i think you know communications is huge and especially if we're talking about doing um more communications, uh, more websites, more ways to reach out to people, you know, it, it, it's a lot, you know, and, but I think, you know, I'll leave it up to the people who are actually doing that, that work to decide what they need. So. Much appreciated. So what am I hearing? Well, because they are asking here, I think, even though there's no question mark at the end, nor is there commentary that says we'd like to ask the board, um, uh, to increase. So what do you want to do next, Karen? I think you've gotten me by my lonesome, giving you even one more in turn, and the majority saying, uh, on the other side, Manny in disagreement saying, if you didn't put in the budget, we shouldn't be approving it now, and three people saying they're fine with approving this. So um, where do you want to go with that? Um, well, if, if the majority of board approves it, then, um, you know, we're happy, you know, that the staff needs it. As, as far as um, communications, I, I've been communicating a little bit here. Um, I, I think that we had um, plans to work on the, um, uh, the OPD website as, as a result of um, the, um, uh, that was one of the recommendations in the, um, uh, the police reform police and, and reinvention. Yeah. And that's definitely something like, I think that we could use extra hands on. So. Um, that could be helpful. Um, so uh, we would say yes. 
Okay. I just so it's it looks like you have the three people who um are agreeing with what's being asked here. Um I'm still going to say that I would like you to have even one more person because this is somewhere where some talent is available and we can really do some cleaning up of a lot of things. Um related to web, social media, etc. But that's a, a passion of mine. So I didn't win the argument, but um, you still will get the four positions that you guys determined is what you need. And I'm assuming that right. legal didn't ask. Um, Stuart, you've had in the past, you have had an intern, but you didn't ask for any on this in this budget? Legal does not want. And I it was taken out of my budget. I asked that it be taken out previously. So I haven't okay. had more than three years. All right, I'm just throwing it out there as an opportunity to be helpful. I don't, uh, not stepping on toes. I just always want to offer uh, folks the opportunity. Okay. Great. Terrific. So this is contingent. Okay. Oh, <laughs> now you have a slide set of questions. <laughs> See, that's where Maddie, with her sense of humor, should have not put that slide up. <laughs> anyway. I right. guess questions. Yes. Does anybody have questions? Uh, okay. Thank I think you. We're good. Great. Um, can can I just ask a question? Because I, I just wasn't really clear. So was um I, I the, the question I believe from three of the board members was that if if there was a need for a communications intern, that would be okay or did I misunderstand? I think everybody basically said, except for me, who said you should have one, said you should do what you think is right. If you want to invest in an intern to do communication, if that's what you need, you do that. If you want to invest, it's your decision. Dana, I, said, I think, said it clearly. But, I think but, the, Omar but, did. The, but it was an incremental, it was approving an incremental slot, though. It was not. You guys asked for four. And that is what the board majority said you should have. How you distribute those four and what you do is for you to decide how to do that. Okay. That's okay. somebody's going to say I was wrong in that understanding, but that's my understanding. Okay, I, 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 yeah, I just wasn't sure if that, that we were, the board was saying four or if there was a need for the, the fifth position that we could. Uh, I was, I was saying if there's a need for the fifth, then, then you should do it. That's what I, I mean. If I may, we could also sort of see how it evolves. Um, I had asked for 15 hours a week for the for the climate smart and clean energies. Um, it's possible that that might that that person who has an interest, you know, might have a, an hour or two um, that that they could potentially work on other things within this there office if, if communication works. So uh, okay. we can try and see how we can incorporate it if it makes sense to. Okay. All right. I, I just wanted to make sure I understood. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I think this was a, a very worthwhile. We'll do it um, again in about a quarter. Um, you know, if you don't have all the numbers ready a week or two after the quarter, just let us know. But I really would like to have this done quarterly. I think it's important for the public and I think it's important for the board so we're not jumping all over the place asking questions about individual projects. There are a lot of initiatives. That's really like good news. Um, all good stuff. So we can move on, I think, to the next item on the calendar, which has to do with awnings, I believe. Yes, I think we have a few awnings, Stuart. Two, right? I was on mute, I apologize. Uh, oh, we have sorry. two. Uh, we have first is 15 Croton Avenue, which is uh, directly across the street from our building here. Uh, and uh, if someone could just bring that up. I think that I did invite both property owners tonight. I think that Mr. Priego, 435 uh, Main Street is here. I do not know if Mr. Campoverde is here with regard to 15 Croton, if not. Uh, Stuart, that, there's someone with their hand up. That might be the person. That might be him. Yeah, so, so what I'll do is I'll bring over um, Martin and the Zoom user. So I'm gonna Thanks. first bring over Martin. And Zoom user, if you could just introduce yourself, that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, you would need to un unmute yourselves. Will, is that you? If it is, you can unmute yourself. 
they're still both on mute. I've sent them messages to unmute. They may not, they actually may not realize that was to them. Oh, Hello? there, Martin is here. Okay. Good evening. Okay, Mr. Priego, I'll tell you what, why don't we do yours first? Okay. Uh, Maddie, can you just pull up 35 main? Yes, I sure can. Thanks. Give me one moment. Folks, this is an application for uh, Maracas Bar and Grill for an awning. Uh, it's at the former location of the six degrees of separation. Uh, Mr. Priego, good evening. I hope you're well. Good evening. Thank you. Okay. And uh, uh, we're going to just bring up for the board to see uh, your application, but particularly what we have here, which is the proposed uh, picture of the awning uh, and where it would be located. Uh, and folks, uh, for those of you who have not approved awning applications in the past, this is required because since the awning goes over a village street, uh, a, a, a permit from the board is required before the, uh, the approval from the board is required before a permit can be issued by the building department. So that's why we are here. Uh, and uh, the uh, color and the type of awning uh, that is proposed for a 35 Main Street is there. It has both the size uh, and, as I said, the location. So uh, if anyone has any questions uh, of Mr. Priego uh, or of me, uh, please feel free. I just want to know if it's about the same size as Six Degrees since I can't visually see these. I'm not good at, at looking at heights and widths and stuff. Is this about the same or bigger than the Six Degree of Separation awning, which I think is already there? Mr. Priego? It, it is the same size. We're only uh, recovering the uh, the owning. You know, we're only changing the, uh, the uh, you know, we, we're recovering the owning, changing the color, and that, that's all what we're doing. But it's the, it is the same size. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Do you own other places, by the way? Uh, yes, Tabasco on South Highland Avenue. Ah, okay. All right. Thank you. That was my only question. Anyone else from the board? I'm, I'm okay with this. Yep. This meets with the board's approval. I'll have a resolution for next week. Uh, and once that, and assuming that's approved, then uh, uh, Mr. Priego will go back to the building department and they can issue your permit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, so you sir, much. for joining us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Now, it looks like Zoom user is not here any longer. So, Maddie, if you would bring up 15 Croton and I will talk this one through. Zoom, Zoom user's here. I can. Okay, he's not. I, I, I didn't see him in our panel. That's why I saw Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Zoom user, I'm bringing you over again. There you You're are. You're unmuted. Okay. Will, is this you? Yeah. Will? Will? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. How are you? Good evening. I'm sorry. This is my first time doing this. Uh, never before, and I apologize. I'm sorry. You're doing great. You're doing, Will, you're doing just fine. Uh, we have Thank up you. here a picture of uh, the proposed... You, now, you have, you're putting two warnings over the two windows, correct? Yes. Okay. And That's the plan. They're, they're black, and they're, they're, they're going to have no writing on them. Is that also correct? Uh, I like to... Uh, I like to put something there, uh, okay. I, but it's not in measure. Like uh, in my window, it's going to be uh, essential grooming, and the other one, it's going to be with gold, uh, gold letters also. Um, it's going to say something simple also. Okay. Folks, as you know, this is the uh, shop right across the street from our building. Okay. So... Uh, uh, I'm familiar with Will because he's come here a couple of times when he had to get some assistance from the building department and the DPW because we got to put a no parking spot in, in that lot so they could get to the lower level there. So it's good to hear from him tonight. Thank uh, you. Any questions with regard to this awning application, which again, because it is over a village street, requires approval from the Board of Trustees? I'm fine with it. <laughs> with it. I'd love to see what the lettering would look like at some point. And uh, that's, that's what we're going to say because looking up at the, the section view that you have in there, it seems like the only part that you can put some sort of writing is very small. 
not it, if, if you go back to the comparison that from the previous sign, it had it had a gap. They have a, some sort of surface where you can put something in there, like the letters of of the of the business. So here, I'm just curious to see if you can make that a little bit wider, so you can put some sort of text in there, something that people be able to see it from you know either by walking or by driving. Uh, we. We're planning to put something underneath. Uh, I don't know the size exactly about the letters, but uh, it, it's a, uh, let me see. I think I have a picture here, no. Uh, okay. I think the letters is gonna be right in the front of that. There is a little, a little line right after the window in the top. Um, it's, it's nothing big, but uh, like I said, it's going to be gold letters, and I think people they're going to be able to see it. Okay, no, I'm okay with that. Thank you, Mr. Manuel. Anyone else on the board? I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. So Let's again, we'll we'll have a resolution next week for the board, and uh, assuming it's approved, uh, will you you'll then be able to go back to the building department and get your permits. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you for your time. Hey, what happened to the ladies? <laughs> oh, the ladies, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, uh, guys. Thank you. And stay safe. I really appreciate it. God uh, bless you. Uh, thank thank you, you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you there. My pleasure. Thank you, folks. That's all the applications for tonight. Uh, I think that's it for tonight, right? I don't think we have to mind. I don't think we have anything after this meeting, do we? It's unusual, but I don't recall. They did not schedule an executive session for tonight. It's okay, a lovely then. Ten fifty-five, folks. I appreciate it. Um, so this concludes our meeting for 14 2021 and yes a uh, member of the community asked me to conclude all begin and conclude the meetings with the dates on it um so thank you all for joining us and uh, we had uh, a lot of updates very much appreciate the staff for being with us liz i'm sorry we didn't get to hear more from you but we'll save that for another moment in time and um Meeting is adjourned. I don't have a gavel. I'm doing it on the computer. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Take care. Have a good evening.